amazing singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Hey, hey, check one, two. What's up, podcast land? Welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. This is your old buddy, old pal, J.R. The Handler. And uh, on the FaceTime machine today is uh, my brother, the namesake of this podcast, Mr. Justin Moore. What's going on up in Arkansas, Just? Man, it's cold. As you can tell, I got my vest on. Um, it's well, that don't chilly. mean nothing. You're this, always cold. <laughs> this is true. It's been chilly here for the last week or so, though, man. And so... Um, um, excited to be in the warmth of my office uh, and in my, my vest and um, ready to go for season three, man. I'm excited. We've, we've been off for a little time. Hopefully everybody enjoyed their uh, holiday season as we did. We'll get into kind of how ours went. It was a little different this year, but uh, and also hopefully JR, everybody enjoyed the preseason episode that uh, we dropped last week and one of the first comments I saw on YouTube was hey we got the video at the same time as the audio so excited about that and we told you guys that was that was a goal of of uh, season three so hopefully we'll continue to make that happen but happy to be back with you guys hopefully everybody is well yeah I uh, I saw that I saw that comment too, and and I'm everything went off without a hitch. So we're yeah, like you said, new year, new season. Um, just getting off this break and getting back into it. It's chilly down here too. You know, it's sunny today, but uh, it's brisk. And the uh, on and off the last couple of weeks, yeah, it's been good and cool even for down here on the coast. So I know our uh, brothers and sisters up north and uh, getting beating, uh, this year with these <laughs> nor'easterns, man, that stuff, uh, you know, it, it, and those places are so pretty in the summer when you're up there, up in New York, oh, I was man. talking to a guy from Minnesota. My neighbor had a crawfish bowl, uh, yesterday, uh, for the pre Super Bowl, and, uh, actually got uh, engaged to his longtime girlfriend. So congratulations, Wiley and Kim. Um, and I was talking to a guy from Minnesota there, and he was like, you know, we're just kind of used to it. In the winter, we're just prepared. We go to, you know, we stock yeah. up and partition out stuff and use food savers and have what we need to get through, and you have the fire. But uh, he said the summers were great, but they have mosquitoes up there too. So yeah, I'm we like – you know, I think about it, it's like, I like my law. I'll take my chances down here with a heads up on a hurricane. Uh, you know, that snow and stuff, I, I know if it's where you're from, you probably, like you said, you're used to it. It'd be like I am here with the bugs and the humidity. But, uh, man, that looks brutal. So, I hope everybody's okay with that. But yeah, anyway. it's uh, like you said, though, they do have beautiful summers and they're milder and they don't get all the same humidity that we get. But mm -hmm. I, I'm, I enjoy snow. Not at my house, but I enjoy it for like skiing, you know, right? Uh, which actually we're going skiing a week from today or tomorrow, something like that. So nice. Looking forward to that. But I, I'm always glad to come back home. And, you know, I say it's cold here. It's probably in the upper 40s. <laughs> right. You know, so those those folks up north, our, our friends up that way would, would laugh at you and I. But uh, um but yeah, man, it's kind, you, uh, it's kind of what you're used to, you know, it's just whatever you're used to and where you grew up, I guess your bones get acclimated the longer you're in a certain place, you know, cause it doesn't phase them. You know, when we go up there and play those shows, you see how the guys come in wearing short sleeve t-shirts and you're over there in, in five blankets and a, and a jacket yeah, trying to oh, warm up before we go on. No doubt about it. The only reason I like to be out in the cold weather is it usually is hunting. Yeah. You know, and that's typically it, because you have to be, whether you're duck yeah. hunting or deer hunting or elk or whatever the case may right. be. Um, turkey hunting is pretty mild because you're talking spring, but I don't do a whole lot of that because I'm so terrified of snakes. So. Yeah, and can't, it can't, and down here, yeah, it can be hot during turkey season. Oh, I, I, no doubt. I remember yeah. going with dad when I was younger and end up peeling off everything I wore that morning. When you go, uh, you, yeah, we know now because we've talked about it a few times here on the podcast, but uh, you've really. Uh, got a fondness for the skiing uh hitting the slopes you've done that a, a, since you the first time you went was a few years ago and now you're just hooked when you're out there are you cold or do you have enough gear on to where it doesn't phase you no it's 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 wild you know you hear people all the time say wherever you are it's a different kind of cold and you're going oh bull crap cold's cold but it's a different thing i don't know if it's the fact that you're continuously moving while you're skiing obviously um or or what it is but you know you don't wear a ton of gear um i always have under armor on you know a top and a bottom base layer yep. 
and then really just my bibs and a jacket and you know I, I don't know if it's the fact that that stuff is made for keeping you warm even though it's somewhat lightweight or if it's like I said you're just you're constantly moving I, I don't know I, I mean correct me if I'm wrong but there could be something to um you know the the snow and the reflection of the sun or something i don't know i mean I, oh yeah I, I, don't, I don't know i mean that oh, may sound that get, may sound crazy yeah. but no and you definitely can get sunburned uh in the freezing cold if when that sun that reflection sun too like same as if you're on the water yeah, and that's kind of hat on you st- yeah you still get that reflection so yeah that makes but, sense and you know those yeah. bibs the, the technology with all that gear now like you said i wear a pair of carhartt long johns when we're on the road in cold places and you know, I mean, they're the technology on them, man. They're just they're so good, and like those bibs, they're they're probably thinner than they've ever been, and, and oh keep yeah, warmer than ridiculous. Ever. So yeah, yeah but it's fun, well, man. It. Plus, a little yeah. bit of whiskey uh, in the morning yeah. <laughs> warms you up, you know. So yeah, they always strategically place that little bar in the in the little lodge there at the bottom of the slope. You well, know? That's usually where I end up. You know, yeah, you well, always t- catch me there. Typically, we've gone to Steamboat a number of times, as you know, and yep, it's just kind of where we fell in love with going. And what we'll do is we'll map out our, our, I guess, trail decisions, which ones we're going to take. Um, Cause we'll go, all right, we'll do these two or three and that'll lead us to that bar. And then we'll yeah. go to two or three and it'll lead us up to that bar. You know, you, yeah. you kind of strategically map out a route. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, have a beer absolutely. and then get back out there. And so, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Um, man, uh, I don't know if you want to dive right into the Super Bowl or man, what you we want we might as well hit the about. hot topic. We might as well hit the you. hot topic before it's old news, like most things end up these days. Uh, Talking about cold weather, I mean, you got a guy that spent what twenty seasons or something like that, and about the coldest weather you could you could play in, and goes down to about the warmest climate <laughs> in the NFL, and it didn't change a bit, man. He he. he Brady's putting on another ring. It's just, I'm not a, I'm not a New England or a Tampa Bay fan. As everybody knows, I'm a Steelers fan. And so, you know, being in the same division with Brady forever, I, you know, I don't know the guy personally. I'm sure he's a good guy, but I didn't like him because he whipped up on us. But uh, I mean, it's just incredible his career. It really, truly is. It's just amazing to see what he's done and just continues to do. And I mean, hell, he may get to ten. I mean, who I knows? Mean, I mean, it's, it's possible. crazy. Yeah, I mean, he's still at a high, high level. Three, three touchdowns yesterday. Not, I mean, and they were making, you know, some of those were making plays, extending a play. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. You know, I, I, I'm a Saints guy, so same thing. I don't, I don't really, and you know, the Tampa Bay is one of our rivals. Um, but I don't, you know, I pull for most of the Southern teams anyway, so I don't really have a hatred for him. My brother lives in Tampa, so I kind of actually like Tampa. You know, Sharice get on to me for that. But um, I, I like, you know, the only thing I could say is, well, that's the only team to beat my Saints this year was the team that won the Super Bowl. So I, yep. I'll use that little bit. I'll go for that. But, you know, you and I talked before the games, and we talked earlier in the season because, uh, you know, when I was saying my Saints were pretty good and your Steelers were pretty good, and you said early on, you said – yeah, but man, it's gonna it's it, Kansas City's really put together well. It's gonna I mean it's gonna take something special to beat him. And then you see a team like the Bucks who get a new quarterback. Then they add some, start adding pieces throughout the year, and people get healthy. And they look like my man OJ Howard. He got hurt about the fourth game, yeah. and he was one of the big pieces that enticed Brady to come down there. They got a good young tight end, and, and he was out pretty uh, much all year. Yeah, after that, he played like four games. Yeah. He's been out the whole season. He'll be back next year. But uh, so they they put together this team. And then here comes Tampa Bay because, you know, we beat – Saints, we beat them earlier in the year. And, you bad, know, beat but, them bad. But then, then they started putting it together and they came on strong and got hot. Like we've said in other sports, sometimes it's better to be hot than good. And, yep. man, they got hot at the right time and the Steeler or the uh, Chiefs just didn't have anything for them. You know, Chiefs, Chiefs also, I, I heard that both of their tackles were out. Their left and right starting offensive tackles. And that's – you know, it's not as flashy as a line, a linebacker or a, a running back or a wide out, but, man, you lose your tackles. That's it's a big deal. I mean, you saw that if you watched the game, which I know you and I both did. You saw that was a big piece to the puzzle. You know, Brady – and I give Brady all the credit and Tampa Bay all the credit in the world. I mean, they made the plays. Uh, but Brady had all day to just kind of sit back there and pick the Chiefs apart. Um, and it really – not a lot down the field, man. It was little screen passes and running the ball. I mean, old school football, which 
for me was a lot of fun to watch. But yeah, not, they didn't really have to do anything super special. They just played really well. And uh, Kansas City, on the other hand, and maybe it would have been different with their you know the two tackles that they were missing. Maybe it wouldn't have been because Tampa Bay's defense is, is pretty dang nasty. But yeah, but man, you know, Mahomes was running for his life the whole game oh my i mean it was just as a fan of football and and wanting to see a great game i was disappointed in the game but you got to tip your cap to to tampa bay and i was kind of happy in a sense to see uh bruce arians win his first one he's been a yep. you know a fixture of the league for a long time and seems yep. like a good dude and uh, so it was fun to see him win. Win his. It kind of reminded me of Andy Reid winning his first one last year after doing so much in the league. Right. It was kind of ironic that yeah, you know, two two years in a row, a guy who's won basically everything but the Super Bowl as a head coach gets to experience that. So that was kind of neat to see. Yeah, and you know, uh, fun fact: Bruce Arians, uh, former Alabama assistant uh, under. Uh, under Mike Dubose in the '90s, he always boomerangs it back to Alabama, folks. <laughs> I'm just, I'm here to tell you, but it's because there's so many of y'all in the league, <laughs> players and coaches. And you know, I, I wish I knew the story. Uh, I, there was a, there's a good one about him um, there, but it was, it was during our down years. Yeah, and he was a coordinator. I can't remember how it all, how it worked out, but yeah, yeah. he was a, he was an assistant at Bam. But yeah, congrats to them. Congrats to Brady. No doubt now the goat. I mean, it's. You I mean, know, there's they did no the, denying it. Whether they you like the, him or you don't, I mean, there's just no know, denying it. I mean, to to catch him, that means Mahomes, you know, being the being the baby goat, and he had a bum toe too. You know, you can tell he wasn't. Yeah, he was hurt. Swiftly, he wasn't himself. As normal, but um, he's got to go to eight more Super Bowls to have a chance <laughs> to catch Brady. And well, he's got to go to at at the very least. He's got to go to to get to the wins. He's got to go to six more and win them all. Yeah, I mean, but to, or, but to catch him in appearances, he's got yeah. to go to eight more, and he'll never get it now unless Brady comes back and he beats him next year because he'll always have the head to head. Right, you know, yeah, it's pretty crazy, so, and, man. And I mean, you just like you said for twenty years, and you know they show the meme of Brady when he was at the combine. Just looks like average Joe standing there. Just looks like they honestly. Any- <laughs> did you see the side by side they did of of him when he came in the league? It was just like a headshot, and him now. I'm not even saying this for dramatic effect. He literally looks younger than he right than he did. <laughs> I mean, it's it's in, he's in much better shape. Yeah, and he looks. He literally looks younger. It's it's it's, yep. it's, it's crazy, man. It Probably really is. Diet, diet, dietitian. Yeah, I know he's uh, a yeah. he's a big proponent of uh, drinking water, which I know a lot of people yeah. who are health nuts and even outside of are. But like he takes that to the extreme, almost as important as what he puts in his body. You know, from, yeah. from a food perspective. Yeah. It Crazy. works, Bruce in the Crazy. pudding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just a just a tall, good looking, just football <laughs> yeah. slinging son of a gun. Got a beautiful wife. Kids are all gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, so just, yeah, if you if you drink a lot of water, uh, yeah, you'll you one start day off. marry <laughs> yeah. a supermodel and be the yeah. greatest player in NFL history. That's kind yeah. of the lesson I think here. <laughs> so yeah, and, be, well, and, be, and beer's got water in it. So I know a lot of our fans yeah. and us included have been trying to trying to catch up on that. But yeah, so. you can. You could one day go from an average looking guy and twenty something years later just be even better than you were when you started if you drink enough water. So Hey, you know. speaking yeah, of the speaking yeah, of the Super Bowl, I wanted to remind people we had uh low cash cowboys yeah. on last season and they had they had a great story about Gronkowski, which obviously came yep. back to play for Tampa Bay this year. Um and I know Low Cash was there last night. You said you saw him, but Yeah. Um, oh man, they, they were pumped. They were pumped. Re- they had they had it tracked all the way from. They had like the tracker going from their house, them going to the game. I yeah. mean, they were crewed up, gear head to toe. I mean, yeah, it was cool. They the, we, we talked about um, the fact that they had uh, developed a relationship with Rob Gon- Gronkowski and his brothers, right? And it was a great story. So if you haven't checked out that episode, I don't know which number it is, but it's in season two and. It's a pretty pretty fun story and a pretty fun episode, so go check that out. Uh, season two, um, episode whatever with Low Cash Cowboys of Justin Moore podcast. So, um, yeah. Gronk ain't ain't done nothing but block all year. Saves it for the Super Bowl. Just acts like goes out there, and looks like he's twenty two, and, and two and, and touchdown they, passes. Been and, off drinking with 
Chris and Preston yeah. and, and ain't, ain't, ain't in shape worth a yeah. lick. Drink a tequila with them hanging out on the boat and then just going to go out there, like you said, and show out. Two, the two longest plays they had were to him. Those, you know, kind of they had to kind of make something happen, like third, fourth read. And it was Brady to Gronkowski, like, like just boom. They, they actually passed Montana and uh, Jerry Rice. Crazy. And, that was, and you know, growing up, like for us, I mean, Montana and Rice, I mean, that was the other side of the world, but you had to pull for those guys. Montana I mean, just, was – to kind of bring it full circle back to Kansas City, Montana was my guy when he came to Kansas City. It was kind of like a situation where, um, you know, Brady left where he had been in New England forever. Um, right. Montana was kind of the same way out with uh, San Francisco, came to the Chiefs, and the Chiefs geographically are pretty close to me, and I love the Chiefs. They had Tony Gonzalez, uh, Marcus Allen, uh, Montana, and and um, so I loved the Chiefs and fell in love with Montana, and so to see them break that record, it was just another example of golly, man. I mean, it just it, you know, just on and on and on, and so yeah, congrats to them, and yeah. and uh, you know, hate to see football being done, but um, you know. Because of the way the season was this year, particularly in college, we're not too awful far from spring football in yeah. college. So, right, um, looking forward to looking forward to that here. And I don't know what two, three months, something yeah, like that. yeah, soon. And and basketball, they're just now saying they're going to try to throw in an all star break and an all star game in Atlanta here in the next couple of weeks, I believe. Um, but uh, basketball is just rocking on, and it's so that means it's at about the halfway point for it. Uh, I was looking on here. My uh, my Pelicans aren't uh, having the, the the numbers don't look as good as they do. The, you know, Pelicans are sitting at about eighth or ninth in the West. But uh, you're just not going to go beat the Pels. I'm just going to tell you that uh, they're good. But that it, it's just crazy how when you look at in the East, you really have the Sixers, the Bucks, the Nets, and the Celtics, and maybe the Pacers. And then it's basically everybody else. And then in the in but then you turn in the West, and it's the Jazz. Ahead of everybody over there, which is crazy. Uh, How's Joker. Houston doing? I, out, they're like tenth or eleventh. Um, uh, Boogie Cousins coming back, playing well. Um, Lakers in second spot. Clippers, Suns out of nowhere, but that's Chris Paul just went to the Suns, so he brought them some life. Uh, Spurs are always in the hunt. Nuggets, Trailblazers, Warriors sitting at eighth. Uh, but but uh, you can bet. Uh, Steph Curry's gonna have them and Draymond. They're yeah. gonna they're gonna be in the hunt for it. So and then you, like I was saying about. My Pelicans, and then you look down at like 14th in the West is the Mavericks and 15th Timberwolves. I mean, that's Luka and then Big Cat. I'm like, you know, so anyway, it's real tough in the West. The East, no no knock on them or anything. Uh, sitting in 10th is the Cavaliers, my boy uh, Colin Sexton. You're talking about an intense defensive cat right there. And uh, he actually uh, uh, beat the Lakers a couple weeks ago. Uh, so are the Lakers. I mean, you're kind of the NBA guy of, yeah. of our podcast. And I, I love basketball, but I'm a bigger fan of college. Uh, and I start paying attention a little. We're kind of the same. You're kind of the same with baseball as I am with NBA. Like, you you know, the closer yeah. it gets to the postseason, I start paying a little more attention to the NBA. And I think you – by yeah, comparison, same. about the same with major leagues, and there's a lot so, of there's just so there's just so many too many baseball games. Yeah, there's a lot of baseball. So are the oh, Lakers the team to beat again? I mean, is that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, LeBron's still on top of the heap. Um, yeah, it's about where it was last year. Yeah, with with him and his team, the way they're put together. They're How about be the, the Bucks? Team to beat. They're still they're in the East. They're up there. They'll be in the hunt. Because um, uh, my boy Bobby Portis from Arkansas is actually uh, in their second rotation. He's getting. To, yep. He's getting some run, and I, I know he had a good game a week or so ago. I just saw it kind of pop up somewhere, and so – Yeah, I, they're, I like, second, they're second in the East. They're, they'll cool. be in the hunt. And then as a Braves fan, to, to talk about a little bit of baseball, uh, the Dodgers just got better. Uh, they signed Bauer from uh, the Reds, who's just Cy Young winner last year, so the rich get richer in the Dodgers. Uh, but I guess at least – him not playing for the Reds any longer. He's he's out of uh, our division because there were talks about him going to the Mets, which obviously same division. So, but anyway, yeah. point being, it's not going to get any easier. The Braves are right there, but boy, it's just not going to get any easier with, no. with the Dodgers just just loading up more. But uh, it never does. 
Never. We got a good team. We'll be back. So, yeah, we'll Braves be back. got a good team. Speaking of Dodd, or go ahead. No, I was just going to say. Speaking of sports, uh, man, we're we're excited. Um, we're we're getting really close to some softball practice starting with the girls. So um, yeah, basketball will be over this week. We have games tonight and um, here in a couple of days. We have uh, our last couple of games. So. Um, Looking forward to uh, those games and basketball's been fun, but also really looking forward to some softball because we're going to do all tournaments this year. So um, can't wait to to step it up a notch. We're moving up to 12U, but Ella, our oldest daughter, for those out there listening, is also going to stay down and play 10U as well. And it'll be the first time since they were like – six and eight or something like that that ella and ken will get to play on that team together so oh wow that's our middle daughter our second daughter so so that'll be kind of fun for us and but while we were on the sports subject i just wanted to to yeah let you know we're we're getting dangerously close and you know me i love basketball but i'm i'm pretty stoked about some softball it's it's i know that's, you are that's my baseball softball is my uh my favorite stuff to coach and and play and all that so Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely want to get in that before I, before I forget, I wanted to say on the, uh, about the, um, uh, the Dodgers out there and I, I text Joey this, you know, we, I don't have any, um, um, condolences out this week, but I will give that one to Tommy Lasorda. The great Tommy Lasorda oh, yeah. passed away a few weeks ago. Uh, Dodger legend. And I mean, just, I remember back in the day, you know, he was on TV and he was, he was a character, you know, um, and fun fact of the day on that, Tommy Lasorda and I are actually in the same fraternity. He's also really? a Pi Kappa Phi, uh, just like I am. <laughs> Big shout out to Pi Kappa Phi, Gamma Gamma, Troy State, all my boys. Uh, but yeah, Tommy was, he was one of our head guys that they, they use in recruiting stuff. I remember early on and, uh, he, and also for regionally Randy Owens from Alabama, uh, also, same fraternities, I but he different schools, obviously, but the same fraternity. So anyway, wanted yeah, to. Yeah, uh, was. That was back when baseball um, was doing really good ratings wise and all that yeah. kind of stuff, and and still was truly America's pastime. And I think they've kind of they've they've heard a little bit over the past decade plus or whatever, but. It was because guys like Lasorda that were just absolute characters. They were figures. Yeah. yeah. They weren't only managers or, or players. I mean, they had personality. You know, the, yeah. him, uh, you had like Lou Pinella who would go yeah. out there and take – they would go out there and steal bases and throw them into the stands. Yeah. And it was fun. You know, it was it, – nobody <laughs> was ever going to – it wasn't going to get physical or anything no. like that. But just, to, just some really – fun stuff to see you know as a, yeah. as a kid you're seeing Ex them kick dirt on the umps feet and all that kind yeah. of stuff except for so. when uh nolan ryan beat up robin ventura then it got a little nasty it got physical then <laughs> but that was but, that was probably and, and deserved like, and like you've said before though the great thing about baseball is they have to wear the uniform the coaches have to wear the uniform yeah. like the players do so see a tommy lasorda if y'all don't know who we're talking about please google Dr. No, he was Legend. not built tommy. for he was not built for a baseball uniform <laughs> no, but he looked so great out there and yeah, it just worked so perfect awesome. all of yeah. them with their guts and their little i mean skinny legs and just yeah. but the, the tight uniforms but it, it was that was they part all, of like you said they all look like frogs that it <laughs> Pulled their britches up way up high. <laughs> like that singing frog. Their, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No butt, no yeah. no, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no meat legs. on their legs, just a no. big old gut. <laughs> yeah, they all used to be ball players, you know. But back then, that's yeah. the difference. You know, you think about uh, – Babe Ruth in, was overweight. Yeah. Greatest you think player about of the all athletes. time. I mean, back then, they, they always show the clip of Lenny uh, – um, uh, Daxter? Who is it? No, the um, – Lynn, the the old uh, Chiefs quarterback, uh, smoking the cigarette at halftime of like halftime two. <laughs> you know, talking yeah, about, but you uh, had managers, you had players doing that all the time. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I remember there was a guy who who was a longtime manager for the Pirates, and his name's going to escape me. Dave would be disappointed. Uh, Jim Leland. Yep. Um, and then he was with the uh, the. Tigers for a while. Anyway, he yeah, he, he you never saw him in the dugout without a cigarette. I know. I mean, it was just, I mean even the players just though back time. then it was just different. And now, like you said, I mean, it's just the highest level, and they train all year long. <laughs> oh and yeah, this and that you know. So Pretty anyway, fun. 
Uh, but, yeah, talking about breaking records earlier in sports, and we'll kind of lump those together, there have been some at-home sport activities uh, at your house lately and have turned into not so much breaking records but breaking my godchild's leg again. <laughs> so, uh, we so wanna, I guess we'll go get ahead into and, this. Yeah, yeah. we kind of we touched on it in our um, preseason episode. But – so we've mentioned um, for – for the past, I don't know, handful of episodes that my wife owns a uh, a couple of stores. One of which is uh, called Soco. It's a, a clothing boutique, adult, mostly women, but there are men's items there as well. And we have uh, a little store called This Little Piggy, um, and so that's a children's boutique. And so she has to go, I don't know, three, four times a year to market. And typically I'm on the road and, you know, we're out playing shows. So we have my parents or her parents or a babysitter to help us while she's, she's gone. Clearly she can't take the kids and they have to be in school, et cetera. But seeing as how I'm home, I was – uh, here with the kids, all four kids by myself for, she was gone, I think five days or something like that, which I'm totally fine with. I'm a, I really hands on dad as JR knows. And it's not intimidating to me or anything like that. You know, our grandparents, you know, that whole era, the, the men really didn't do as much of hands on type stuff for the most part. There were exceptions. I know you're yeah, take you to, and my take you to work and stuff, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, you know, like... It wasn't changing diapers, was just, you wouldn't think. It <laughs> no, it was a little different back formula then. That was just stuff. a different era, yeah. you know. But, right. I, you know, I learned from my dad and one of my grandfathers in particular uh, the opposite of that. And you, uh, you're not a parent yet, but you're the same way. You're really hands-on with your nieces, nephews, godchildren, et cetera. So um, I'm known to be the helicopter mm. parent in our... Uh, relationship in our household and Kate's the one who's it's certainly not in a um, disregarding type fashion or or anything to that nature but she's a little more nonchalant about things so the kids uh, were out on a trampoline we got a trampoline which is a whole nother story um, I guess I should tell that since we're into it so we have the couple friend who um, co-own the the two stores with us. Great friends of ours. Matter of fact, we're going skiing with them um, here shortly. the The husband is a character. Oh yeah, as you well know. Yeah, he's playing he's playing Call of Duty right now with his headset on, screaming <laughs> at a twelve year old somewhere. In so, in an attempt to try to annoy Kate and I, he tries to buy gifts for our kids for birthdays and that kind of stuff that we don't want any part of <laughs> example would be a trampoline we had a trampoline at our old house and we said look we don't want another trampoline we were lucky nobody broke any bones or anything while we had one we dodged that bullet so to speak and well what does he buy for uh kennedy i believe for her birthday in november a trampoline which requires me to put it together because the kids yeah, are screaming you, can we please put a trampoline together can we please <laughs> Then you got to so, mow around it or, you know, yeah, move it to pain. mow and all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks, looks hideous in the backyard. You know, the whole thing. It just looks like a death trap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, excuse me. So, back – so, I owe him one. Um, but, so, back Chloe's, to – Chloe's getting a pony this year. <laughs> yeah, she's going to get a Shetland pony. Um, but uh, – and a drum set and anything yeah, else I can come up Marshall with. Marshall half stack. <laughs> <laughs> May just get her a marching band. Um, <laughs> but, get her mariachi band. Follow yeah, her around for go. a week. <laughs> so I go pick the kid. Kate's gone. I go pick the kids up at school. I think it's the second, third day she's gone. Go pick the kids up from school. Well, they all want to jump on the trampoline. And Ella, being the oldest, she's really good about kind of watching out on the trampoline in particular about letting her sisters know when when her brother's out there be very careful. Don't really jump. Just kind of play with him. Let him run around a little bit, and then I'll come get him, and, you know, he can – let him think he he jumped with him and all that, and then I'll coerce him into doing something else. Right. So I leave them all out there. I, I come in to make a glass of water, 
uh, or a cup of water or something. I mean, I couldn't have been gone three minutes. I get back out there. Ella's gone. I don't know where she went. I guess she went to her room or something. And they're, they're screaming, Dad, Souse really hurt. Souse really hurt. And I'm thinking, no, nah, I'm sure he's not. He's a baby. But, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll take him in. And Well, I couldn't get a straight story or so I thought from – Kennedy and Klein on what happened. You know, they swore up and down. They didn't fall on his leg. They said his legs hurt. I go, well, did you fall on him? You're not in trouble, but yeah. I need to try to figure out what's going on. Well, come to find out, Kennedy had double bounced him, which means bouncing him up real high. And I guess he yeah. came down awkwardly. And so I thought, well, he, I'm sure he's fine. You know, he was walking around, but he was limping. But it, I, I watched it that evening, and the next day it got a little better. Like his limp was less noticeable. So in talking to Kate, because he had broken his leg last year, different leg, actually at church, ironically, uh, going down a slide, and under my dad's care, by the way, <laughs> and uh and so i said well let me take him just to make sure you know that way we know I, i'm sure it's fine but let me take him well so i dropped the girls off at school the next day take him up to the doctor who did his leg last time this happened different leg and um he comes in with this look on his face, and I know. I'm like, are you kidding me? He goes, yeah, sorry. Here it is. And he shows you on a little iPad, like, where the break is. And so with it, we we get to come back home with a cast way above his knee, you uh-huh. know. And I, I just feel like the most god-awful parent on earth, you know. My dad was actually giving me a hard time about it. He goes, boy, that's, that's father of the year material there. I said, hey, you hush because – he broke his leg in two places on your under your care. Right. So he only broke it in one this time. But long story short, he's gotten the cast off and he's back to running around like like crazy. Yeah. And so that was um that was a pretty fun week, um yeah. to say the least. I, I I I was happy to be here and get to spend time with the kids, but it it went a little bit awry and and so it was well, it, it was kinda looking well, back on it's gonna be funny, but yeah, they bounced back pretty quick. I know you sent me a video. He had he was uh, he didn't seem to bother him too much. He was pretending he was a dinosaur <laughs> since he had the uh, yeah. T Rex leg. Yeah. So for those out there listening and watching, uh, my son who's three, his name's South. He's obsessed with dinosaurs. That's his his oh, thing. Yeah. Um, and so when they're putting the cast on him, he goes, "Dad, look, my leg looks. Like, I look like I got a T Rex leg." So, he, he, you know, at that age, they don't even know, you know. They're, yeah. So that's that's the the good thing about it, if there is one, right. I guess. So, But, yeah, he, we've had three girls who play sports. They're rough, as you know. Yep. No broken bones. First boy, he's three, he's broke both legs. So. Dang. Well, <laughs> get, get them all out of the way. They'll grow back stronger, hopefully. And uh, and I know we briefly hit on it. The girls, they're, uh, they're, they're getting done with – basketball are they done with basketball now this week yep they'll this be done this week and then we'll go into softball with that so that's going to be good i was telling somebody yesterday we were talking i don't know how it came up we were talking about uh uh ball and getting to do things and i was telling them i was like yeah justin's oldest daughter i said she plays 40 50 ball games a year when you, yep. if you add up travel ball and stuff with her softball at, at her age already yes, now. And i know in high school we only played about 20 games total in yes, high school. especially this year because we're going to do all tournaments. So, you know, you go – if you lose every game in a tournament, you're playing at least three. Um, yeah. But more likely you're playing five, four, five, six ball games a, a weekend in a tournament. So, you know, if you if you look at it from now through – we'll play through the end of June or something like that. I mean, say two weeks, three weeks a year – or a year, a month throughout that, um, you know, you're looking at quite a bit of, you know, quite a bit of ball, at least, at least 30, 40 games. Right. So, yeah, but it's fun. They eat it up, and we don't push it on them, but it's just kind of what you do where we are. Uh, people are really into sports, and all their friends play, and all their parents are our friends, and it's just kind of a fun 
Kind of about like when we were growing yeah, up. Yeah, it's about of. like when we were growing up. It's just camaraderie and hanging out. And, you know, when we – they're all excited this year, all the kids, because we'll go play all these tournaments. Well, that means staying in a hotel so they get to swim in the pools. And, the, you know, that – they all like that sleep kind of over stuff. with their friends. Yeah, exactly. All buddies will be so, there. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that for sure. So yeah, and then I know, and they're gonna. Uh, I know your your you were number ten. Was your number or is and Ella was has been ten. Are they all gonna be ten? They've they've um they've all you know really we've only had Ella and Kennedy up to this point. Klein played t ball a couple years ago, played basketball last year, but it was canceled this year due to COVID. Um, the younger she's you know, six, which I know you right. know, but, um, so hopefully she'll get to play some, some ball this year, but yes, Kennedy and Ella have been 10 up to this point, both of them. Um, when they are on the same team, however, this, this year, I guess yeah, one I of them will have to, they'll have to arm wrestle each other, I guess. She'll have to be, oh, she'll have to be oh one. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Wanna be so one me and one, one of my best friends were always uh 10 and 11. So maybe I can convince Ken to be 11 or something. I kind of changed mine up. I think Easton always kept his. My my best friend growing up, Justin Easton, he always kind of kept his same number. Um, I can't remember what he what he was. Might have been seven or something for whoever he liked, Elway or something. But I kind of rotated every year with who I was digging at that point. You know, it just kind of changed. I might like this one or that or what position. And I changed positions a bunch growing up. You know, I was thinking about you the other day, and and no and no not picking at you because you being the king of self deprecating jokes himself. Uh, I saw a news clip that I saw was newsworthy to tell you, you know, we, we shouldn't have sold our, you shouldn't have sold your, sold yourself so short, no pun intended, but there's a five foot two guard playing in division one basketball right now. That is an absolute bucket. I watched this really? guy get like 40 the other day and they I, six, three guards. I mean, almost as quick as him. They just, he could they couldn't do anything with it. I think he plays for, um, is it SMU or somewhere like that at a, at a school? SMU has yeah, had some good teams over the last few years. It might be SMU or somewhere like that. But it's Division One school, wow. and this guy is five two. I think he's averaging twenty something points a game. Good for and him. Like, That's awesome. I, I clearly I love seeing stuff like that. Yeah. But. Well, you know there was there was all, when we were growing up too. There was always one guy that was shorter than the, the shorter of the point guards that could always get it done, like the Spud Webs, like the Muggsy Bogues, Muggsy those type Bogues. characters. Yeah. And, st- and now it's kind of transitioned. We're all, and there used to be a lot of taller guys too. Like I was a fan of the centers because I was six foot when I was twelve. Hadn't grown since, but. Um, there used to be, everybody had a seven foot, seven two, seven three center, mm-hmm. and some teams now only have, you know, like the tallest guy may only be six nine or six ten. They may be running a couple of more swing, wing guys, and then but then the guards, the point guard, could be like a Ben Simmons who's six nine. The guards yeah. are bigger, but the a lot of the post players are smaller. Yeah, um, and they, you know, got to stretch than, than it out were. more now. You know, I know Arkansas was pretty tough last year um, basketball, and our our center, they called him six 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 seven, but I don't know that he was. I mean, he was really more like a three man as yeah. a rim protector because he could jump and. But they Athletic. they played four guards, uh, mostly four out, one in, and some all five out kind of stuff. That, yeah, you know, the basketball's changed. It's it's changed. It's, it's just so different now. I mean. So it, it's kind of fun to watch, but you know a lot of guys like Steph Curry have changed the game as well. I mean, with the and Damon Lillard and them, they they Lillard. shoot from the they shoot from the logo. I mean, it's a it's yeah. a thing. It's crazy. I mean, we would have got f- we would have got the hook so fast if we'd have done that in high school. Couldn't even get it that far. <laughs> I, I mean, mean it was I, crazy. I still don't see how they get it that far. I've played it. We've we've shot we've shot on pro pro gyms before. Yeah, it's, and it's insane. That three-point line is a heave on its, its own. It's more. It's a lot further than you think it is. You know, we all did it in games, some with, you know, whether it be in transition or yeah. pull-up kind of oh, stuff yeah. when you were kind of feeling it, but it wasn't a regular thing to do. There was no, you know, you, you're not going to sit out there and shoot 20 going, and hit, yeah. It's one thing, but you're not just going to stand out there and, or I'm not at least, going to yeah. stand out there and go, to, you know, ten for fifteen or something, and these jokers just fill it up constantly. I mean, unbelievable. It's but yeah, that's I want to give a shout out to that yeah. guy. I should have got his name. That's but yeah, awesome. That guy, yeah, I have to and look he was him do, up. And he was do. I mean, he was shooting like little of them. He'd do the in and the bounce back, and he'd be four or five feet behind. And I was just like, this. Look at this guy go. So anyway, yeah, I had to awesome. check him out. Um, that was cool. 
Um, wanted to uh, drop real quick. I know last week I wore our new uh, merch, our new um, Justin Moore podcast T-shirt we had made, and we've got some mugs and some other cool stuff on your justinmoremusic.com site. Uh, but wanted to let everybody know right here, and if you'll see today, I've got this cool Almond Brothers T-shirt on. That's pretty but, cool. But, uh, yeah, I got I just found this as showing a buddy came the other day, and I was going through some old – Shirts. I've got I've got boxes of shirts of all the shows we ever played anywhere that gave us a shirt or bars and bands I knew and stuff. So I, you, the other thing that you have that's cool that I'm kicking myself for not ever. I'm just I'm a sentimental guy, but I guess I've never maybe I took for granted different things along the way or something career wise. But where I was going with that is you've got like all your all access passes still, and I don't have I couldn't tell you where one of mine are. Or is, you know, and we did all these cool yeah. shows and tours and would have been a pretty neat thing to maybe have as a bar top, like epoxy over them or, or put it in a frame or something. I don't know, but I was just, yeah, I was flipping about it and just, there's just no, I, they're probably somewhere in a burn pile or something. I, I don't, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I didn't. I, I thought I thought about that. I kept a lot of stuff over the years. I should have. Uh, I, I just keep stuff in general. I'm, I love history, and I'm very sentimental and on stuff. And um, I, I have all of mine pre-07 when I had a house fire in Nashville, and a lot of mine were hanging on the back of a door, and it just was a glob of plastic. And they were my Wayne ones from early on, wow. Wayne Mills and stuff. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, but, yeah, I kept those. And I also kept, even from before that, all the CD – inserts once cds started coming out when i would because the jewel cases became too much because you'd put them in the cases the little you know kind of leather little black or like, leather or the, or, deals or, or, yeah. yeah or the or the uh, material whatever but yeah the little cases leather yeah. in, your, in your yeah you keep in your truck or car well i would always throw away the jewel cases which the jewel case is the um the plastic part the hard part of a cd case and keep the the paper notes out of it that way i could you know look back look through because they look cool so i kept a bunch of those and i always, and like you said about making a table would be cool but i always thought it would be cool to use them in like my studio or office or music room put them all over use them as wallpaper you know because i've got hundreds yeah i never did know, that either cool. i just threw it all away i read the booklet threw it all away stuck the cd in the in the little case, I know. See, I, I don't know. I, I just somehow did that. But uh, but anyway, wanted to say in that to say last week, if you saw the the uh, preseason uh, report we put out, uh, I was wearing our Justin Moore podcast t shirt. And let you know, I've talked with our merchandise company, and exclusively for you listeners here on the Justin Moore podcast, I've got a special discount code that will get you ten percent off anything on Justin's uh, merch page uh on his website you just all you need to do is at when it asks for the discount code at the checkout use the hashtag justin moore podcast and you'll instantly get 10 percent off so that'll save you some shipping or some taxes and all that good stuff and uh, we may do some of those from time to time throughout the year so and those will only be for listeners here on the justin moore podcast so make sure you tune in each and every week uh like subscribe uh rate us please with some five stars if you don't mind and um uh, be sure to also hit that notifications buttons. That way you'll know when new episodes are coming out each week. And, uh, and you'll know when you're listening, when we put out a new merch discount code, like we just did this week, uh, for 10% off at the Justin Moore music website, merchandise page using the hashtag Justin Moore podcast. Remember to always use that hashtag Justin Moore podcast when you're sending us uh, info and questions and comments on uh, social media handles, uh, JR the Handler, Justin Cole Moore, uh, or at our websites, jrthehandler.com, justinmoremusic.com. Use the hashtag Justin Moore everywhere you can, and especially when you're checking out getting that new merch. So uh, just want to drop that on y'all here so there, the, and I'll probably do it again. So the code is hashtag Justin Moore podcast? Correct. To get the discount. Cool. Yep. And is that is yep. that that all my merch or is that just strictly the podcast merch? That's all the merch. That's any oh, that's anything nice. on the merch sides. Cool. It's a one time code, so make sure you get a couple <laughs> things while we, you're on there. Yeah, know, we've I know I just approved a couple of new items. I know we got a neck gator coming, maybe a mask. Um and there was a, a new T shirt or two I know that I approved, so yeah, uh, I guess that's the only place you can get it right now, since you're not going to see right us now, play music frequently. We we do have a few shows upcoming. Yeah, I know we have. Uh, 
a, a live stream that we're going to uh, do here shortly, and we'll make certain to give you guys the date and where you yeah. can find all that um, in plenty of time. Yep. Uh, to, yeah, that'll all be on the website as well for sure. To, to get you that information, we've got a, a show in, in Grand's Neck of the Woods here shortly yep. Um, yep. in Jackson, Mississippi. I believe it's the Dixie National Rodeo. Dixie National Rodeo. I've been mistaken. going to it since I was a kid with Granddad. Yeah, that's on the uh, that's actually Mardi Gras Day, Tuesday the 16th, Fat 16th, Tuesday. 16th, yeah, okay. So yeah, we'll be looking, in Jackson, Mississippi at the Coliseum. Looking forward to that. And then I'm going skiing the very next day. Yes. So, um, fun, but, fun, fun. But yeah, we're, uh, we're excited about that. And then we'll, we'll keep you guys, uh, up to speed on, on shows, you know, yeah. moving forward. Cause w- March will be the busiest we've been in a year since last yep. March, really. Right. I mean, basically. we've got, I know we have four shows if I'm not mistaken off the top of my head, but, um, We'll, we'll make certain that you guys, again, are aware of those uh, as we yeah. get them 100% nailed down because there's still a couple of questions yet to be answered. But uh, we're looking forward to getting back out there for sure. Uh, yeah. at, at least uh, it feels like each month we get just a tad bit busier. And hopefully by mid to late summer, we're, we're really back to what we would like to call pretty dang normal, you know, right. for the most yeah. part. So and speaking of not being completely normal – we uh, mentioned uh, in the preseason episode, as we called it last week, that hopefully you guys checked out. If you haven't, go check it out. We were supposed to get on and talk for about eight minutes about where we've been and where we're going, and I think we talked for 35 minutes or something like that. So go check it out uh, if you haven't. But um, holidays were were a little different for us this year. Yep. As yep. everybody knows, I'm sure it was for everyone. We uh, – we don't do anything typically, Jr. really over the top for holidays, but we do host Christmas Eve night. My mom's family, it's usually 40, 50 people. And then Christmas Day, um, we we host my dad's side of the family and, and my wife's side of the family as well. So we didn't really do all of that this year. I uh, had a little bit of time with my parents, um, uh, opening presents with the kiddos and that kind of stuff. But we just kind of hung in. And one of the reasons was um, we got COVID. And fortunately for us, it was not too awful bad, awfully bad. Um, we had traveled uh, for some work function, and um, I had. And so came back home and felt fine and, and – um, I went to get groceries or something one Sunday afternoon, and the kids had gotten out of school for the holidays at this point. This was maybe two weeks before Christmas or something like that, and they were out, and so we weren't going to have to be around anybody and weren't planning on being for like a month at that time because of the holidays, which we just kind of spoke about. Right. And so I come back from getting groceries, and I told Kate, I go, I kind of feel achy a little bit. She's like, really? I, she, she goes, you got to be kidding me. I go, no. She goes, I feel awful, like achy, flu-like. I said, okay. Uh, didn't think a ton about it, um, but I was making a soup or something because it was chilly or something at, that day. And I go to – I like to cook as JR does and – I always taste it for seasoning and, you know, like I'm sure most people do. And I go, I can't taste that, Kay. <laughs> and she goes, you got to be kidding me. So um, I had maybe following that, I had maybe, we knew at that point, you know, that's what we got because I couldn't oh, yeah. taste. And then <clears throat> the taste got worse, smell went away, uh, sense of smell went away. And then I had maybe a two-day what I would call stomach bug where I just had kind of bad cramps and it's just like any other stomach bug that you you've gotten in your life and uh so this was also while we were off and we were trying to you know set up for this season so this is another reason for us taking a little bit more time between season two and three than we wanted to but so I had that for two or three days, and I had some of the sinus stuff, which I kind of always have, as you guys hear on this podcast. I'll go ahead and apologize for that. I, I'm always sniffing and snorting and all that kind of stuff anyways, gross as it is. I try to 
I try to uh, uh, hold that stuff in as best I can, but this is the real deal. This is who we are, That's as we it. told you. That's and, it. And so after those couple of days of, of stomach bug kind of stuff, I was fine, man. I felt like I had more energy after that than I typically have. And I cleaned out garages and, and moved stuff around in the house, took a room. Picked a room every day and completely cleaned it out and threw stuff out and donated stuff and, you know, all that. And and Kate was down a little more for the count than I was. She had more of the flu stuff. I never ran fever. She ran fever for like three days. Each of the kids ran fever for either a day or two but weren't really bad sick. Um, and then, I don't know, five, six days into it, we were all – back to normal but we just you know stayed at home which was another reason we didn't have people over for christmas and and those types of things and so but if there were a time for us to get it where it would be uh it would impact our daily routine less than any other time that was the time because we were at home kids weren't going to school we weren't playing ball all that stuff and so it was if there is an ideal time for us not to be interrupted, and again, thank God we didn't get bad sick, any of us, um, that was the time. So that was kind of, we, we JR and I discussed on the preseason episode that we were going to kind of give our experiences with, with COVID, and um, we were fortunate, at least in my household, that, that when we did all get it, it wasn't it wasn't too bad for us so yeah yeah and i I had a kind of a similar experience yeah and i was with you when we went on that work function and um with me it's just you and i on the bus and i was with you and kate we recorded a podcast and then i got home and a day or so later you called and said you know i'm sick and then uh but i never did so i monitored it and i never did and you know what a month later um yeah, I, I, people ask where you, where you think you got it, and this and I have no idea. I went to go get my dad up in Elmore County, picked him up in Tallahassee, brought him down here to stay with me for a few days. We're going to look at some land, and um, on my way taking him back, I, well, the day he and I went and looked at the land, I woke up same thing. I, my nose, the day before, my nose was a little s- s- sniffly and a little stopped up, which par for the course when the weather changes down here like you mm-hmm. like you i have sinuses all the time you know allergies and sinuses most of the year uh got my nose broke a bunch when i was a kid and then um just uh, even before that though just allergies and sinuses. so i have that too so i didn't think anything about it but that next day i woke up and my hands were real sore and my hips and my knees and my ankles and i kept thinking um I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, why am I so sore? And I thought, well, maybe I just overdid it at work or, uh, you know, ate, ate too much cheese or something, you know, something causing inflammation. And it was just weird. So I was just kind of, wasn't too unusual because I've woke up sore before. But then the next day I'm driving dad back home and I'm just kind of tired in the middle of the day and had a full night's sleep. And he just keeps asking, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, something's up though. So anyway, I get him home, come back. It's not getting any better. I go get tested, positive. Uh, so then I'm worried. Hopefully my dad didn't get it, but he didn't. So that's good. And, uh, Sharice was out of town. She left the morning I left to take dad back and she didn't have it. She didn't feel great, but nothing at the ordinary. So I, I, the same night I tested positive, I thought, well, at least I didn't lose my taste and smell. And sure enough, that night it went from instantly, I went from where I could taste and smell to where I couldn't taste or smell anything. Uh, it was just like cold air when you'd breathe. I mean, anything, basil out of the garden, you know, uh, incense or, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, essential oils. Essential oils, that stuff. I, that was the first one. I was actually going to put some lavender in the diffuser there, you know, get a good night's sleep. And I was like, wait a minute. I stuck it right up to my nose and nothing. And um, so I was like, well, great. There goes that. And then talking with everybody, I thought it was going to be weeks or months even for that which luckily i've gotten mine back in like two or three weeks now uh most of it and uh like you though yeah i never really got super bad i was kind of you know just kind of tired and kind of achy for about five days uh but never broke a fever never woke up sweating none of that kind of stuff you know kept checking my breathing had the little you know oxygen gauge on my finger to check that stuff but uh yeah i got lucky as well and sharice went back and we, we quarantined on opposite ends of the house. I was on one end. She was on the other end. And we, I used the living room and, you know, we 
took turns in the kitchen or whatnot and tried to stay away from each other as best we could. And she went and took two tests and both negative. So she never got it. And I did. And, uh, uh, yeah, wasn't that bad, but uh, I was glad when the taste and smell started easing back in because eating without being able to taste anything is just plain weird. Yeah, quite quite honestly, I mean, and those out there who have had this effect on, in the same way, I'm sure will agree that the taste to me, and I've yet to get all my taste back, and, and you're talking, this was early to mid-December, um, and I... I would say now I'm at 50, 60 percent taste. Wow, maybe. Um, it, it didn't. It didn't come back in any way, shape, or form for eight, nine weeks, or something oh. like that. I mean, nothing. It was. It was almost like off-putting to eat. If that yeah. makes any sense, it was. It was really odd. Um, we love Mexican. I know you do. <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, and we could eat it every day. We would go to a Mexican place, and I would get the Speedy Gonzales or whatever, taco, couple enchiladas, that, which you know me. thats I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I'd just eat like half of my enchilada, and, some, and it was almost like it would make you sick almost. It was, just, it was really, really strange. So if I'm at 50%, 60% now – and that's all I ever get. I if I keep that, I'll be I'll be happy. I mean, it, but as much as I love to cook, and it it was it was just annoying. I mean, and there are people out there who have have had. I mean, it goes without saying they've had such a worse time with this, and I certainly don't want to diminish that at all. Um, but yeah, no. it was it was really really odd, and my smell just no I no rhyme or reason about the same. Yeah, it, it's just a weird thing. It, but anyway, we're, we're, we were we were fortunate, and sorry guys, I'm we were my fortunate. Door so Lola can go out. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Lola knocking stuff over. Um, <laughs> no, but we we were really we were really fortunate, and um, and hopefully you guys out there, if you have had it or do get it, you you kind of have a uh, an easier time like we did uh, rather yeah. than you know, it being really, really, really tough on you. So Yeah, and I say, I know a few people have asked me about meet and greets and stuff, you know, when that's going to happen again and all that. And I said, guys, I just don't know. I doubt this year, to be honest with you. And the reason I say that is, and, and I say that to say this, though, with that, if you are sick, though, don't go around people. Stay at home. If you know you're sick and you can, stay away from people. Because I, I mentioned that to somebody the other day. I said, you know, it's going to be hard because even before this, we would have to cut out meet and greets at least probably once a year because we'd all end up getting something like the flu because someone would show up with the flu and, and, and to the meet and greet or to some event we're at. And it's so it, say that, say, if you are sick, just take a time out. It will be okay. I didn't want to stay at home when I was sick, but I didn't want, also didn't want to go back around people till I knew I wasn't going to give it to anybody else. So if you're sick, you know you're sick, find out what kind of sick you are, and then just wait till you're not sick before you're around people if you can. I understand some people have to work. I will never tell somebody they couldn't work, but um, I think that's a big part of it because, you know, we've been oh, almost a year now. We don't really have anything farther than we had to start with. Wear a mask, stay away from people, stay at home, all that. So it, there's really no rhyme or reason. All I can say is, <clears throat> for me, I would think it's got to be somebody sick around people. Now, you may not know it and all that stuff, but if you are and you know you're sick and something's up, Stay away from people. So here's my PSA of the week. Well, regardless if it's yeah, regardless if it's if it's this disease we've all been dealing with, or if it's the flu or anything, we a common cold for that matter. Yeah, I, you know, for for yourself, for the other people in the, and you know, as it pertains specifically to meet and greets, um, for for you know your fellow fan in the meet and greet for for us and our families for our band and crew and all that if you feel bad i promise you we play most places once twice a year We're, we'll make it back and we'll certainly make good on the fact that you had a meet and greet when you feel better you know yeah, and so uh, you know and, and and by the same token if if we come into town and you know we don't have a meet and greet for the night that it's a decision we make it, there's a reason for it. We don't just go and say, "Hey, we're not doing meet and greets." I mean, that's never happened. It's either I'm sick or or 
or you know there there's a reason for it it's not right. you know I, through <clears throat> i know nowadays and we even had conversations early this year about doing it just simply because we knew that um you know people were doing it i've never made a dime off a meet and greet uh, to be honest with you so it's not like it's a money maker for us and necessarily it's just a chance to say hey and you know, shake some folks' hands, and, and um, you know, we're just as excited, to, to my point, we're excited, just as excited to get back to that as, as you guys are, but if, you know, the opportunity presents itself, and you know, hey, I'm, I feel kind of cruddy, for, for everyone involved, yourself included, hey, catch us on the next one, so. Yeah, and absolutely. Anyway. So. Uh, I didn't know where you wanted to go next on this. We've got a few things uh, that we want to talk on our our list there later um i didn't know if maybe we wanted to do a uh oh, another thing too i want to mention here too people still watch out for these fake accounts man people make a fake account about anything we've we've even had to go through that with with kids and uh family members and me and justin i get i get every day i get some of these fake accounts so if, unless it's got justin's blue check mark by it or it's one of our certified accounts you find on this link uh to the podcast uh there's nobody none of us or anybody in our organization is ever going to reach out to you asking for personal information or money or anything like that there none of us have side accounts that's just uh y'all please be careful on that yeah, and, and uh, if somebody with 100 followers is claiming to be a celebrity on there it's it's just not happening so i want to say uh shout out to my buddy paul rogers longtime listener one of our jmp mvps as we're going to start calling all our uh, awesome uh, listeners paul rogers there. the lead singer from bad company that's him that's my whole buddy he's listening uh, no, yeah uh but i want to say also paul shot me over his grades from school this year he got his ged last year so proud of my little brother for that sticking through when it was got tough and he got it and he got his first grades back from uh school this year and uh all all perfect scores couldn't be prouder paul Great. on that so, that's awesome yeah. man so awesome on that brother um i had you know we got a lot of feedback about yellowstone uh because last week you and i or you brought to everyone's attention that I'm watching The Crown instead of watching Yellowstone. <laughs> um, so I didn't know if we could we could hit on that for a minute, and then maybe I'll go back to a couple of these great uh, questions and comments we've had from uh, our listeners. So thank you all for that. Continue to keep sending those in using the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Um, okay, but let's yeah, see so, how well he's listened. Have okay. you watched an episode of Yellowstone yet? Not yet, but let me explain why. Stop! So, go listen! Or go watch listen. it! What's wrong with <laughs> you? You said they had on Amazon Today. Prime, but you have to pay for it extra on Amazon Prime. It's so worth I, it. I know. Well, some it's listeners showed me how you could get on the Paramount Paramount <sighs> Network, but they were showing season two this week, so I recorded it, and next week they're showing season one, so I'm going to record both of them. Then I'll start with season yeah. one next week when they start. I think the 13th is when their first episodes of season one come you're, out. So. You're literally going to be like, I don't know what, why I didn't, why it took me so I know. long. Oh, I've, I mean, I've, the com the comments, everyone, I, a girl, a girl on here said, I, hey, take it from me. I'm English and I, I tell you, you should watch Yellowstone instead of the crown. And I'm from there. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I like the crown. Don't get me wrong. We we're, yeah. we're enjoying it, but like, it, it, it's it, no comparison. It's, I mean, it's, it's Kevin Costner in a, in a Western. I know. I mean, I know. I know. So it's that's like that's open range, one of your favorite movies, but it's a series. I know, and and I, I get, and I'm I, luckily no one's, you know, uh, spoil sent me any spoilers or anything. So I, I look forward to getting into it. But uh, I'm going to. So everybody out there, I know, and I've actually a bunch of our buddies have said they're just <laughs> starting it too. They felt guilty. You guilted them through me that they should be watching it too. I'm telling and you, all our y'all gonna be thinking out there. Uh, so uh, I, I hadn't uh, hadn't started on it yet, but I've got it uh, DVR'd, so I will be starting on that soon. Hadn't made much progress on the Crown either. I was waiting on Sharice to catch up. Uh, so I hadn't I'm either. still early We're like season six, two, seven episodes in, something yeah. like that. It's good. I like the history on it. It's my thing, I, you know, and seeing if it's Me factual too. and and stuff like that. But I tell you what's distracted me from even watching the Crown, as uh, I was flipping through and on YouTube. Um, they have a conjunction with PBS, which is pr probably my favorite of any watching lately has been PBS Ken Burns series. I love all of Ken Burns series, his documentaries he does. And, um, and that's another one we can go that everybody's going to give me crap for not watching yet is the country music documentary. I haven't watched it either. You know, when I heard, I this, when I heard they didn't mention me, I said, screw it. I'm not right. 
There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Kenny who? We don't know who you're talking about. Uh, so, uh, Hank who? Uh, but I, I, I wanted to watch it, and it was on, and it, but the thing they do is you have to buy it or get their subscription to the PBS Plus, which I'm not opposed to, just haven't yet. But the, when they showed this clip, it was of his jazz he did in the 90s. He did one on jazz, which I'm a big jazz fan too. And it started off from like, it's, I mean, literally from the birth of jazz up into present day. And I, where I, I watched about five episodes this past week. I'm at like in the 1930s. Um, but then on that, the, the, whatever the free thing they had going with that expired. So then you had to go after episode five, you got to go buy it. So I've got five more episodes. I'm on the fence. Do I got to wait and buy those? Uh, which I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and get the whole series because, or the whole package, because I do want to see the country music documentary as well. I heard it was really good. I heard they did leave some stuff out. Um, but I want to, I want to get that, but this jazz one is fantastic. And, uh, it's talking about the PBS that goes into last week. You had mentioned, um, some things and we're going to, you know, things you wouldn't think somebody would be into, or you'd be surprised to know that I like this or I like that, or, you know, we could, we might even could call it the shocker, you know, I mean, cause it's shocking yeah. to know that, yeah, yeah shocker. shocking to know that, uh, that we, uh, that <laughs> if we you don't actually, know what that means, go look it up. <laughs> yeah. That, Double uh, that we actually, there. that we like, or that something we like that you wouldn't, that you wouldn't think that we would like or something you know, be that like, you may and, and the fans can even weigh in on it as yeah. we talked last week like you can give us your like it's almost like guilty pleasure or you would be embarrassed to, for somebody to know you watched or yeah you know and we can do it with music tv shows movies whatever so i think this week on the shocker um uh we're gonna do a tv show right yeah and this is TV tough show. for me because I've got a, a few of them to be honest with you, but it only works now. If it only it only works with with you and I, and it only works with you fans. If you actually give something that's that you deem embarrassing, now you can't you can't go. Oh, um, if if you're me, you can't go Days of Thunder because it was kind of cheesy or what, right, and that don't work. Or like but, me last week, I said the the Chuck Norris movie, and you're like, no, it's yeah, Chuck yeah, Norris Chuck Norris, it's Chuck Norris. I mean, Even though it's cheesy and he has one line yeah. in it, but it's still it's still Chuck Norris. I get so, it, I get it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to well, put well, let yourself, me, you got to put yourself out there, people. Well, this I'm, I'm going to try this week and see. We're going to keep shooting at this uh, target until we hit it bullseye. Um, I was thinking one that I, you know, I, I don't hate to admit it, but I think you'd be surprised, and it because it's really I don't know if it's age appropriate, but I'm in 40 now, so you never know. But it just kind of like. A, a show you would think a mall mall would be watching or just not you wouldn't think you know you'd think i'd be doing something more uh exhilarating than watching this but one of my favorite shows is actually on pbs and it's uh antiques road show uh which is kind of like uh a, it's like where these people bring their stuff from their house that may have been in their family and then these people appraise it but it's pbs and it's like at some convention center somewhere and it's just people bringing in just most of the time it's just crap that they have at their house that someone told them it was from somebody rich and See, famous or this i think that's too cool but it's not it's on pbs it's and it's antiques well because we're old that's what i'm saying <laughs> anybody like cody and them's age anybody in their 20s thinks you guys are nerds for watching Antique it's almost Road like stuff. i've seen it it's almost in a way like a storage war in a way right uh no this is just they it's kind of like the voice they show up and audition their stuff off. And if yours is something really neat, they do a, you know, a sit down with you and then they go through the history of what it actually is. And they'll go back and find the ancestry of it. Like do, you know, search it out. It's the high level. It's kind of like, uh, uh, Amer- uh, American pickers, which is right. a show I like to, it's right. kind of, it's kind of like that, except for people bring their stuff to these experts. To they the have same all the experts. Same vein as like Pawn Stars and that whole thing. Right? Kind of, but it's you kind of, but like I said, it's PBS, so it's it's not high quality. It's like you know the blue carpet and the you know it's just it's pretty square. Yeah. But uh, but I, I that was one I thought that would be like yeah you're watching PBS Mama Hour, and I guess another one. If if that's not deep enough, you know, I, I still click. But this is see, I think this is cool. Depends on how nerdy you are. I still watch like anime, like Japanese anime. Like I'll watch like Dragon Ball Z or uh, Voltron. I don't even know what that. you're talking about. You see, that's it's because it's, it's nerdy. But I but I dig it. I'll flip through it if that's on. I'll watch like an '80s rerun of some Voltron or some kind of 
mech war type. It's basically Japanese animation, Japanese cartoons where they use a lot of big monsters or big machinery. Uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, you remember Thundercats? No. You remember Voltron when I'm talking about it's a little before your era where all the, there, there was, f- there was, there was five tigers and they were all different <laughs> colors and they would, they could fight on their own and there'd be somebody in the head of the tiger using it as his, and they had, oh, when, okay. it, when yeah, they yeah. get called okay. to action, they would jump in this tube but it'd slide them through and they'd get into their, there's a lot Almost of shows like this. Almost in a way like a transformer, but there was, was somebody in there controlling it. Yeah, it was just like that. There was somebody That's controlling it. That's too cool, though. But they would all come together and make Voltron. When all five, they would sh- the body would be turned to the head, and then the two of them would be the arms and two would be what, the legs. Uh, Mighty Mor- Morphin Power Rangers. Became. Oh yeah, they direct they directly I mean, ripped I did, them off. I, that was yeah. after our time, the Power Rangers. Yeah. But it was kind of that. Yeah, direct same rip deal. off. Yeah, but there was a lot <laughs> like, of shows like that in the eighties for sure. You got to get a little more. I don't even know how to explain explain it, but I, I mentioned this on the podcast last week. But I don't even I'm not even embarrassed by this because I think it's a great show and I watch it all the time, anytime it's on. But my wife makes fun of me for this because she always says it's like a show for old ladies or little girls, which I don't even know what that means. That's uh, what that's what Antiques Roadshow is. It's for like old people. I don't, that want I don't know even know, know what that means. But Little House on the Prairie. See, yeah, I, I, I love I, I Little House really on the Little Prairie. I never watched Little House on the Prairie very much. Got to be honest, never really watched Little House on the Prairie very much. Okay, so that's a little more embarrassing then than Voltron Transformers. <laughs> I mean, come on, <laughs> comment out there if I'm right and he's wrong that I'm giving more than he's giving. Okay, okay, because right. I think I, one. I think I am. I'll give you two more examples and <clears throat> and I'll explain why I like them. Um. One of them, I think they're both on TLC, so you know I should be embarrassed. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding about that. TLC, um, E, or Bravo. That's <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, there's a family in somewhere in Georgia. And I think one of them, are, I think maybe Ella or somebody started watching this show, and I just watched it with her. This was a couple, two, three years ago now we started. And I love the show, and I, it's like mine and Ella's show to watch together now. It's a show called Seven Little Johnstons. It's uh, it's a, not, not a, to be confused with the baseball movie in, uh, in the shower. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a family of uh, little people. Okay. And um, the mom and dad are probably, I don't know, a few years older than us, maybe early 40s or something like that. They have two biological uh, kids who are little people. I think one now is the oldest. I think he's like 20, 21, and maybe the next one is 18, 19, I don't know, something like that. And a boy and a girl, and then they have three other kids that they adopted years and years ago as 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 children, and they're you know fourteen to eighteen or something, something like that. Right, right. Um, anyway, <clears throat> they're in Georgia, and I forget where in Georgia, but they're just they just seem like down to earth, cool people, and like the dad. I'm envious of because he can, he's really handy, can build anything, can do anything. And I'm just like, I don't, it's almost inspiring. Like I really should get off my ass and go try to do this. Like they bought an old go-kart during this time to help teach them how to drive because they're about to take their driver's test. But he like completely redoes the go-kart and I don't know. It's just, it's a family so, thing. So, something so something like relate. Mark Fisher would do. Mark Fisher, our driver, yeah. something like Mark would do. So I, I don't know. I just relate to them and they're parenting their kids and, yeah. but, but they're, you know, now they're stars in a sense because of the show, but they're normal as all get out and still have normal jobs. I think the mom's a teacher and the dad, works for a college or something like that, but it's called seven little Johnston's and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's on TLC, but they're just a good, how you, it's just really wholesome TV, I guess is my point, how you could watch it and not like smile. Right. I, I don't know how anyway. So, but it's, it's not what people would probably expect from me is to be watching, you know, some reality show of a family. I don't know. 
But they're well, in that's, Georgia. Georgia. That's too, like so. I say, well, that's like I say about you know I um, watching PBS. I doubt people would think I'm sitting around watching PBS, and literally yeah. probably seventy five percent of the shows I watch is on PBS. But that's mine and Ella's show, and then the other one, and we'll give a plug to a guy who we've become buddies with, and I think this is on TLC also. Uh, is a show called Outdaughtered, which I'm, I am outdaughtered. Yes, <laughs> clearly I have three daughters, but, um, but it's a show we started watching. I don't know three, four, five years ago, and it's a couple from I believe they all Uncle Dale maybe had to come on and and uh, yes, shout out to our boy Uncle Dale. Yeah, Dale Mills. He's he's a fixture on the show just because he's a nutcase. And I'm sure he'll be listening to this, and he knows I'm right. But, but a great guy. <laughs> they seem like a great family. That you know, I think the um, the couple with the daughters, um, they, they they had six at a time. I think it was. Whoa. Yeah, I remember so him telling six us. Six couplets they, it, or something. Yeah, I remember whatever, him and his buddies came. Five or six or something. Anyway, a lot. A, a lot yeah, at but, one time. And so it's right. just kind of their journey in trying to, you know, um, trying to deal with having that many kids, in particular at one time, and they're all girls. And um, that's the way I felt for, for a long time before we had South. But it's really – you can tell the family is a great family, and, and that goes – beyond just the couple and their kids it's people like dale and his wife crystal and and the grandma and the it just the whole story anyway i related to it and and they're from um i think they're originally from somewhere in louisiana um and i think it's based in texas now but anyway it's a good show and and that's another was one it, me and me and my girls watch so was it, it like could, um what was the show several years ago about the roll-offs out in uh out yeah kind of kind of like that i mean yeah but they don't think like they had that. adopted they just, children it, they basically just follow family uh, each of these uh, are just following a family around and what they're, with a large family with yeah kind of kids deal and, and it's kind of like it's just mass chaos most of the time which is the way that we feel at home i was gonna you say know, this basically our, these people are living out your life <laughs> yeah i'm kind of watching my family on tv in a sense basically. you know it's, it's so or know what to yeah. prepare for because theirs are a little older yeah and exactly yeah. so anyway but yeah maybe we can get dale on he and a, yeah uh, he and his brother-in-law actually and some buddies came to a show before we got shut down and mm -hmm. um he and i were texting uh, it wasn't too awful long ago and it's kind of funny because we watched the show. Um, my uh, one of my daughters goes, "How do you have Uncle Dale's phone number?" And he said, "I texted him that," and he was like, "Man, it's so funny." He goes, "My, I think his son, maybe it was his daughter, but he has a son and a daughter." He's like, uh, "My my son or my daughter did the same thing," and we we're like, "Well, we know each other or whatever." But it was kind of funny. But uh, yeah. yeah, go check that out too. It's called Out Daughter. So. Yeah, and go check out Uncle Dale on uh, TikTok too. He has become he's quite nut. the uh, the dancer there. He's he's so. a mess now. So uh, that was funny. Uh, but I had something else. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to. Um, well, we can go to this. I had I had a question here. I found on Twitter. I thought we could uh, we could ask and uh, transition out of that and maybe get into. Uh, take us on to something else from here hey before but, uh, we move on though y'all y'all give us y'alls on on all the social media yes. stuff yes uh let us know what it is whether it's you know somebody out there we wouldn't imagine would watch the housewives of whatever or yeah. something like that whatever you think is is like and another so and if there's shocking. any other topics if any other topics you think we should we should cover on that this way yeah, we did music TV or movies shows, or you know whatever yeah. an album a, a you know a type of clothing a food a, a, anything um and send those in <clears throat> and that way we'll have some more to talk about on next episode of the justin moore podcast but i had a question here from my old buddy our old nascar buddy kyle lawler said uh, the tribute to motley crew how much fun was that to be a part of and what other rock band would you like to do something like that with again i thought that was a pretty neat question it was a lot of fun i mean it kind of <laughs> was just out of the blue to be honest with you my my record label president had had uh, developed a relationship with with some of the guys or all of the guys from Motley Crue, and I don't remember where Motley Crue was with being retired or not being retired at the time or whatever. 
and I'm going to say this was about 2014, 2015, something like that. And, and uh, they came up with the idea to do a tribute album to Motley Crue. All artists uh, that were to appear on the, the album were my record label uh, brethren. And um, my label president came to me and goes, what do you think about doing a Motley Crue song? And I'm like, ah, give that to so-and-so or so-and-so, you know. I mean, I, I was certainly familiar with the Motley Crue and and liked some of their music, but but probably wasn't as familiar with those guys as some of the other artists who were on our roster at the time. And so we had a, a funny story. We had a bet um, going about a song that I had out at the time, whatever it was. And I said, if it goes number one, because it didn't look like it was going to, I'll – I'll do it or whatever. <laughs> and uh, if I get to pick the song, and I already had Home Sweet Home in my, my mind to do, and ends up the song goes number one, uh, whatever single we had out, I don't even remember. Um, and I said, all right, I want to do Home Sweet Home because the more I listen to that song, it really has a lot of country roots in it, you know, from the piano being prevalent in it to... I mean, lyrically even, and I, I just, I, I loved that song. I remember having that song on a cassette tape. I remember having a cassette tape of theirs years and years and years ago, and, and I had forgotten about that song, to be honest. And so we go into the studio, and I said, and uh, our label president's in there at the time, and we're going to go cut the song in the original key. And for those out there who know anything about music, I mean, it's a that's a pretty high song um, as far as a register goes, singing wise. And um, my label president goes, "You can't. You, we need to drop the key. You can't do it in that key. We need to drop the key because Vince Neil, the singer on the song, sings high." I said, "Well, if I'm not going to get to do it in the original key because the piano sounded better in that key, guitars, etc." Plus, I was just confident in my ability to do it. Um, I said, man, I don't want to do it. So we recorded it in that key, and he goes, damn, I guess you were right. <laughs> and so um, I don't, that was a long-winded answer, but it was a lot of fun. And then, you know, I'm thinking, these guys from Motley Crue, you know, you hear horror stories about Tommy Lee and this one and Mick and that one, and you're going, man, do they really want some little – tiny cowboy singing their huge song and not only were they cool with it they loved it Vince wanted to sing on it which he did and we're talking about Vince Neil and then all four of the guys were all about being in the, the music video for it so yep it just really it really once again taught taught me that that Regardless of whatever walk of life you're in, whether you're a Motley Crue member or you're me or you or, you know, anybody back home at where I grew up or you, I mean, everybody's people. Everybody's yeah. more normal people. You know, we yeah. have such different lives, but they were all about it. They could not have been kinder to me and more complimentary of me. Vince and I did it live a number of times together on the road and different settings and uh it was a lot of fun i had a blast yeah. i i really honestly we put that song out as a single and i feel like um i feel like it was a, a really big hit record for us even though it 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 i don't think it got out of the 20s but uh i felt like it should have been a much better charting song because i was proud of the fact that we recorded it the way that we did it was all my live band on the track um, so I was proud of it and it was a lot of fun. And it goes over huge at the live show. Huge. I know you, I know you save it for encore some huge. and sometimes you'll just put it in the set. Yeah, it always goes. Up. Yeah, I had a, I, it, since then it's helped me out a ton because my wife's huge Motley Crue fan. And, uh, now when we need, uh, her, she needs to go to a show or something. I, we make a, make a text yeah. now that, that helps me tremendously. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, and even that day, you know, I, I was a huge crew fan when I was younger and, um, getting to hang out that day. And like you said, we, we were just back in the alleyway outside the venue where we recorded that video. And this is back when I 
smoke cigarettes and uh you know a couple of the crew guys and and, and me and some of our band and crew guys having cigs out in the alleyway just like average joes were all in the yeah, same little grimy folks, alleyway yeah, <laughs> yeah just yeah. normal as could be you know and uh but yep. so it was great well on uh, the rest of that question is there any any bands outside oh, of yeah, a country that you might would ever want to that you've ever thought about doing some stuff with you know, it's not something that I've, I've put a whole lot of thought into. Uh, any of the old Southern rock guys, I would be all about it. I mean, uh, we mentioned Paul Rogers earlier, a different Paul wow. Rogers. But yeah. um, to me, he's probably my – I think he's the best rock and roll singer maybe ever when you're talking about pure vocalist. Um, and – so I, it would be fun to do something with him. Um, I'm a big Seeger fan. I was a huge Tom Petty fan. I hate that I didn't get the opportunity to meet him. Um, but I haven't really put a lot of thought into it, but there's a couple of examples of guys who I, I think it would be fun to do something with if the opportunity presented itself. What about when we were when we were teenagers? What rock bands did you like then? I know you're mostly a country guy with a little Nelly sprinkled in. What Was, was there any rock bands during that time you really liked? You know, you really, you weren't really a fan of the grunge, were you? I just, I wasn't. No, I, no, I wasn't no, like I a big either. fan of, um, you know, what was big when you and I were growing up in the rock and roll world was outside of the Petty and the Seeger, but they were a little before that, really. Right. Um, was was the grunge stuff like yeah. um and Pearl Jam and yeah, you know, I was never a Pearl Jam fan, and that's not a knock yeah. against them. I just don't care for that style of music them and the um yeah i saw them live one time and they were great but i was the same way i didn't really who big was, fan uh, outside of that who did K- kurt cobain sing for nirvana nirvana wasn't a big big into that and that was big at the time and i just huge huge yeah. i was alice in chains yeah uh, i wasn't really into those deals or, or those right. those bands i, I just I, I was at that point if it was rock and roll i was listening to tom petty leonard skinner yeah Marshall Tucker. I was listening to more Southern rock stuff. The only band that I would consider rock and roll um, that made that wasn't Southern rock that I loved, and I remember buying tapes and CDs and stuff was Aerosmith. Love, oh yeah, that's loved a, Aerosmith. Yeah, that's just a straight classic rock, American yeah. classic rock. I, I love their stuff, and you yeah. know, I'm not, I'm not a big Beatles fan. I'm not a. I, I like the Stones. I don't love them um yeah i like led zeppelin i don't absolutely love them you're all american baby all American. yeah i I guess so and really not by design it just kind of is what it is and we've and and you've and we've actually done a few shows with steven tyler arrows from aerosmith uh yeah since he's on the and he still sounds he still sounds just ridiculous and still looks like somebody's crazy aunt oh my gosh Uh, but uh Oh my god! Joker gosh. looks ridiculous. I, I remember <laughs> playing. We, we were in Dallas for the uh, Dallas for the ACM Awards. It was the year that I had. It was the year after I won, and I was going to present the award that I had won, um, and ended up giving it to Cole Swindell that year. That was when my pants split, and I was I was uh, nearly hanging out on national TV. Uh, and I was presenting with my idol Dwight Yoakam. And anyway, I'm playing golf with my manager and at the time, Stephen Tower's bodyguard. And we're coming up 18. We're playing golf. I think it was the day of the show, the ACMs. And I see this little dog. I'm getting ready to hit my approach shot on 18. And I see this little dog run across in front of the green of eight, 18 green at this really nice golf course where your buddy's a member, he and his yeah. wife. And yeah, I think you uh, might have got brothers, us. John Eddie. I think you might have got us on there. But anyway, and then I see this crazy looking, what I think is like an old woman. Because uh, Steven Tyler's got to be 110 pounds dripping wet. But oh yeah, it looks like this crazy old woman running across the fairway uh, in front of like the fringe area of the 18th green at this exclusive resort golf club and screaming at this tiny little dog and chasing after it like something out of a movie. And I'm like, look at this old woman. And and the bodyguard, he's no longer his bodyguard, but he goes, that ain't no old woman, that's Steven. I go, you got to be kidding me. And so 
I was like, man, could I meet him or whatever? It, I'm like, I, first of all, I can't believe that Steven Tyler running after this little shih tzu or whatever it is. Yeah, and right. then we go up, we go over, and he's staying in a, like this little fairway home or whatever, and he's out on the porch smoking a cigarette or something. And and he goes, hey, Steven, this is Justin. Y'all are on the same label, blah, 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 whatever. And, and so I said, yeah, man, a, a, a huge fan. He goes, but it, it was so funny because I remembered him – speaking like he would be singing on stage in front of 50,000 people. He's like, hey, how are you? <laughs> kind of do. It was just like, it was just, you know, and you've had them too. It's just like there's so many moments <laughs> that are so surreal that we experience that you can't even imagine. You can't even understand that you're in this moment or why you are. Or, this was another one. I'm, I'm wa watching him barefoot, bare-chested, wearing a, an old, like a muumuu that my grandma would wear, <laughs> like running after this little dog. I mean, you, you couldn't make it up. You know what I no. mean? Like it just. And then I'm over there talking to him, and it, it's just nuts. And I, I mean, just nuts, you know. But uh, super nice guy, it, and it's it crazy. Just, and then a couple months later, literally, we're on the shores of Lake Minnetonka. Uh, playing a show with him. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, a private event. I was. I met a guy at the Crawfish Bowl yesterday. It was in Minnesota. And we were talking about that. And I was like, "Yeah, I've actually been to Lake Minnetonka, the mighty waters of Lake Minnetonka, like on Dave Chappelle. You know, where Prince had a place and all yeah, that." Yeah, I, I mean, like, it was just. And we talked about it earlier. Of places up north that are so beautiful. That place is just gorgeous, but I mean, it's just crazy. You know, we go up and play a show, and the the backdrop is the lake. And yeah. then you get to stand there in a group of people that's, I don't know, 200 people or something. And this yeah, it was maybe. a private party deal. And you're like, that's, that is, that is Aerosmith. I mean, I that's get Aerosmith. Joe, Joe Perry and all, yeah. all those guys, but Stephen Tower is Aerosmith and he's up there going, cry when I met you and I'm yep. down to let, I mean, you're just going, holy smokes, man. Yeah. So crazy. With a with with an all female band, I know our friend That's right. Jimmy played. That's in his right, band, which is another band. Prince thing, actually. Yep, yep, on the shores of Lake Minnetonka so. in Minnesota. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, thanks for the question out there, um, and uh, please keep using the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and send us all those and uh, send us some. Uh, uh, hate to admit, I love, and uh, you'll be surprised, or some shockers as we call them. <laughs> um, I. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, random i just saw there and this is i hit this real quick but i just as you flashed i noticed and if you'll notice i don't have my wedding ring on right now which is strange and uh, oh. i know well you and i since the jimmy fallon incident a few years ago we we wear the rubber rings yeah. now I, my my regular rings in my nightstand yeah. drawer but uh i noticed two nights ago mine had a little cut on the back of it i don't know i guess working or somehow it got a little tear in it which i was like dang disappointing because i figured i'd keep that one for a long time it's only been a couple of years, but um, the next day it broke at work and came off. And I told Sharice the night before that it was torn, <laughs> and she just kind of blew it blew it off. And then it broke, and uh, so I showed her and told her, and um, mm -hmm. she didn't give me too hard a time. But I can tell you, ever since then, it's been two or three days now. It feels so weird not to it's have the my wedding ring thing on ever. Yeah, it ever. Really I just keep rubbing it. I'm gonna rub a hole in the back of my of my finger here because I can't quit touching it. It's strange. I had to get a new one. Um, this summer, actually, we were down in Florida at the beach, and I had to had to get a new one. Um, they sell them in all them little surf shop deals down there, and I know y'all got a bunch of them, like yeah. we do in Destin. But the great thing is they're twenty bucks. I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah. but where I was going with that is these are awesome, but like it's probably like when your hand swells in the summer, or vice versa in the winter, mm -hmm. or like. I don't even know where I – I didn't even realize I had – mine wasn't on my finger down there at the beach. Of course, we were together, so she knew it was – there was nothing crazy. But Yeah, no funny business. Yeah, but I'm like – I just all of a sudden was doing like this because I'm like you. I kind of always play with it or whatever. And I'm yep. like, I don't have my ring. I have no idea where it is, so it probably slipped off in the ocean, and I didn't even realize it. Or, I mean, I, I don't know. But yeah. the great thing about these is, you know, I had expensive ones, and I still have a 
$1,200 one in our jewelry box in our room, but I, I, it's hard to get away from the rubber ones, especially, and it's not like I'm out running heavy, heavy equip, uh, equipment all the time, but it sure is nice knowing that if I get it hung somewhere, it ain't going to rip my finger yeah. off or whatever. Cause right. I don't know if you play guitar out there, but the, your fingers are pretty important, especially this left hand. If you're right handed <laughs> on a guitar yeah. player's uh, hand. So, yeah, I'm in the same boat. I, 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 I'm, I don't do anything too crazy, but after, like I said, the Jimmy Fallon got his finger ripped half off and this and that, I thought, and, and my ring, my why not my, is the point. Yeah, I mean, why, why not? I mean, and my regular ring kind of did like you're saying. It would slip some certain times when my hands wouldn't be as thick as the others. It would. I was worried about losing it. Um, so I got those. I need to. I need. I'm gonna get another one. But I. Um, you just don't want to provide any false hope to the ladies watching. You're taking right. Exactly. That was it. Basically. <laughs> basically. Want to let my let my let my baby know that yes, I'm I'm getting me a new one. So, um, but yeah, because uh, you know, not just because of the fouling thing, but just in general, you know, it seems like yeah, it makes sense once you see that. Yeah, it could just something could just rip your finger off. And I I wear a lot of jewelry at, at the show. You know, I've got my show stage. Oh, we know Thunderhead, <laughs> the bling uh, that I like to wear on stage, but that uh, made me think about it off. I, I try not to wear much, um, but uh, I tell you, I was looking the other day, made me think of the, the rings and stuff. And people have mentioned the Merle Kilgore, who was Hank Jr.'s longtime road manager and a, and a songwriter and entertainer in his own yes, right. Brother. But, uh, yes, brother. I tell y'all something fun. I had a good sit down with my buddy, Mike Diamond the other day, he came over and we told some stories and recorded and did some stuff but we got he's a big country music and wrestling fan so we talked we were going to talk for 30 minutes and three hours later we're still recording but uh <laughs> he had, he was asking me had i had ever been to merle kilgore's gravesite and i said no and he's like oh my god you've got to at some point and he said pull it up so anybody out there pull up merle kilgore grave and uh, that's about what old jr wants for his it's a picture of his face and it's him it's ha his hands doing this thing on it with all his rings on it and at the bottom, it says, are you kidding me? I've made the biggest deal of all time or the greatest deal of all time. And then it's like, wow. it says something, you know, beloved, you know, uh, dreamer, singer, songwriter, and loved by all. And it's a picture of him and his dogs. I mean, it's so, it's so Merle Kilgore and so me. So anyway, it made me think of that, the jewelry. Uh, but yeah, I am definitely going back to get one of those ASAP. I know last week we talked about some uh some movies and music and new stuff we were going to drop i was going to go ahead and throw out a few things here i saw i know there's some new music out right now uh, our good buddy and a uh, friend of the podcast and label mate and management mate and friend of ours and fellow arkans arkansan and hell of a singer uh he sanders got his first ep out uh is out now you can find that common ground ep available everywhere uh on all of uh, anywhere you get your music from uh, also uh, coming up real soon uh our buddy kip moore's got a new album coming out uh our friend uh from our to our tour two years ago uh, laney wilson's got a new record uh saying what i'm thinking i can hear it in her country voice uh she's got an album coming out on the 19th of february our uh, another arkansan our buddy adam hambrick uh, has got his album broken ladder coming out on the uh, 19th of february as well uh ian munsick uh, coyote cries coming out i've listened to some of ian's stuff i like what he's doing uh and then um uh, who got to play at the Super Bowl yesterday? And I've heard mixed mixed emotions on that. Uh, I thought it was thought it was fine. Thought it was great. Um, it's like anything of art. Some people like stuff better than others. I thought it was great. Uh, thought he represented the genre well. But uh, Eric Church um, has got not one, not two, but three albums coming out uh, in April. Uh, he's got the Head or Heart and Soul. Uh, which Hart will come out on the uh, 16th uh, and on the 420 and then Soul on 423. So uh, y'all be looking out for that new music. And then if, uh, like I was saying earlier, make make sure you hit the notification button to get all these new episodes of the Justin Moore podcast because uh, maybe here in an episode or two uh, mm -hmm. down the road, we might have some new music to discuss maybe uh, when that might fans can start listening and looking out for that down the uh down the road sometime this year or so maybe so uh make sure y'all listen in on that yeah. um not only are, are all those artists um that you just mentioned friends or at least the majority of them um we're big fans of them um and he i'm not just saying it because i'm friends with him and and you know that He's another Arkansas guy, or we work together in any capacity. He's incredibly talented. If you haven't 
checked him out. Go do so. And um, Kip is one of the most underrated artists of our genre, in my opinion. Um, Laney, uh, I think, has such a bright future ahead. Country is all get out, as JR said. Absolutely. And Laney actually is going to be on the podcast as a guest. Yes, um, yes. And that date is what, JR, do you know off the top of your head? I uh, think she's going to come – it's the week after her album comes out, so uh, it'll be that following week after her album comes and out. We I think we're gonna try to record the on, podcast now on Thursdays or Fridays. On Thursdays, yeah, we're gonna try to get these out every Thursday so, in conjunction with the YouTube video. So yeah, the the um, it comes out the nineteenth. You said. Yep, I think we're yep. We'll try to shoot to have that out on the the twenty eighth. I believe is when we're gonna have that episode out with Laney. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. I there believe. You go. So yeah, y'all so, be listening. Yeah, out. Have, we'll have. A, We'll have Laney on uh, as a guest on the 25th. And for those who don't know, um, that'll be our first uh, female guest. Yes. But for those of you that don't know, she was out on the road with, with, um, with Tracy and, and, and I uh, on uh, the tour that got interrupted because of the pandemic. So she's, she's a lot of fun, and I think you guys will really dig getting to know Laney a little better and um, – and those other three, Adam also, Adam Hambrick. Yep. Uh, has Adam been on the podcast? Not yet. Okay, so. But he's, he's, he Heath said and, he's down. Heath whenever. and Kip have both been on the podcast. Uh, Adam will be, and uh, Laney will be the 25th of February. You can check out that episode. So, uh, And I might to, try to, I'm a, I'll reach out to Marshall too and see if Eric wants to jump on maybe yeah. um, during his, he's got an album, come, album, a month-long album release. Surely he can. Come holler at his boys. Yeah. Man, he's one. That's one. I know you've toured with him a ton. I had with John before you, and since then, Eric, we toured with Eric about as much as anybody. Maybe Miranda. Yeah, we did a lot of. Um, you know, it's funny because you, you, you kind of start with a group of guys or girls or what artists, and yeah. and Eric was out maybe a year or two before us, and uh, so we played a lot of those big clubs and stuff with him. He was still clubbing and, and we were just kind of getting into that scene. And, and so anyway, yeah. And to your point about the, the anthem, uh, and you could even relate it to the halftime show or whatever. This is why I don't do the anthem. I've done them at, at NFL games and baseball games. and It's a thankless job. The, the only person that anyone is ever going to say 100% did it great is Whitney Houston, which that is the greatest anthem of all time, in my opinion, Whitney Houston. But yep. it's, a th it's a thankless job. If you do it right, you're supposed to. And if you, if you do it in a little different way, like Eric did it a little different with the guitar and slowing it down, then – People are going to gripe and complain, but it's a, it's really, really hard to do, and you, you're never going to get everybody to love it unless you're Whitney Houston. No. <laughs> it just is what no. it is. Yeah, it's like me picking out catering for our bunch on the road, and everybody's not going to be happy. It's and again, not that's why I've, I, no what I, 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 I was asked to do it, as a matter of fact, um, last year for the – I think it was the AFC Championship game. And I just don't do it anymore. Yeah, I just it, there's no there's no winning basically. I mean, yeah, you you do it good. Yeah, they're, they're either gonna okay. say, and if you mess yeah. it up, everybody thinks you're, you know, worthless. So I just it, there's right. no winning in it, and it's not like you're getting paid to do it or anything. So no, uh, I love to do it and to honor our country, but at the same time, you there's just so much smack talk about it that you're just like God, i'll just stay home and watch somebody else do it i mean i know and it's and, and i and it's not and it's hard and you know i've been there with i remember wayne did it at the senior bowl one year and i've been with you a few times when you've done it and you nail him and he did too but it's hard because you're in the it's a big big venue it's echo it's not made where you can hear yourself there's this echo with the pa speakers and you know and then like you know the the, the halftime show this year and even the beforehand it's it's not a full house so it's kind of weird and i mean you know yeah, it's, it's a weird year and you got to take your mask off before you get out there and i mean it's just i'll just say this none of that stuff is fun for an artist it's it's no, it's really no. just a lot of stress and you're just doing and you just got to kind of want to do it 
Yeah. You just kind of so. basically, Eric, they probably asked and he wanted to do it. And it's like, I'll, I, you know, probably knew the ups and downs of it. But, um, yeah, it's just anyway. So that kind of say that in his defense. I mean, he did it the way he wanted to do it. And yeah, Wait, and you know the only the only is. real solution ever to it would be just have the military band, one of the military See, bands. I love that because they'll idea. have a great singer in their band. Just let that guy do I it. I love and that then, idea. I mean, because you know, just, or just realize somebody's doing it and and don't give them crap about it. Like just, yeah, they're just doing enjoy it. it. Enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy it. I mean, it's time that's being donated, and yes, you get a lot of looks. You know, it's a lot of impressions. I mean, a lot of people watching and all that. But if you really mess it up, I mean, you're putting your balls on the line. You you mess Absolutely. it up. That's a lot of people looking at you in the in the way you don't want to do it. So, right. That being said, uh, only one person's done it that that I can recall that everybody lost their mind over and yeah. Is Whitney Houston. So, right. And so and Marvin hard. Gaye did one at the NBA All-Stars one year, but he did like a more groovy jazz version. And yeah. uh, some people now give him shit about that, but that was one of my favorite. I mean, I, I thought it was just cool. And see, and to play it was devil, the 80s. And, yeah, to play I mean, devil's advocate, like me, what I want to hear, I want to hear somebody do it a cappella. Straight. Do it like the song. Don't try to change it. Do it. But – yep. That's the way he wanted to do it, or the way that Eric wanted to do it, or what, I mean, whatever. I, yeah. mean, I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with anybody. Anyway, it's a point being, it's a thankless job, and it's a very difficult thing to do, yeah. regardless yeah. how you go about doing it. And so, cut these right. folks a little bit of slack because it's it's just really pressure packed to do it yeah so yeah yeah and and don't at me about church because his camp's been super cool to me shout out to all his people over there brother todd all y'all uh good camp we love them guys no, they've always speaking been of putting your us. speaking of pulling your balls out um i was thinking <laughs> we were talking about we were talking about uh you know things to watch things to listen for i didn't really have a new music thing out per se to listen to outside of heath's which i i strongly recommend like you said i uh, go with that is yes please go get Heath's EP you will not be disappointed I know a lot of people have messaged me on the side that didn't know about him until we brought it to their attention and they're you know from older friends of mine's dads and parents to to you know younger folks than me are all loving Heath stuff so check that out but uh I was gonna think of a of a newer movie we talked about a few shows that you can uh, watch on the uh, streaming channels but I thought one I had a nice gift here a few weeks ago from your longtime producer and my friend Mr. Big Country Jeremy Stover uh, he sent me a DVD in the mail and I want to put it as I'm going to start a new thing every week is JR's DVD of the week because uh, I think I think that'll give you something outside of that you can go look for and find it may be some more obscure stuff that you might have to dig around but most of this stuff you can find on Amazon for 10 bucks or whatever but Big Country got me this one uh, last week so I want to let everybody know this will be the handler's dvd pick of the week and it is called hank williams jr full access and i'll read you a little bit about what's on that just now i've watched some of this clips off youtube on the bus but jeremy went and found the entire dvd and if y'all can see this picture of him with his guitar and his belt buckle so huge uh it's uh unlike any documentary or concert video you've ever seen hank williams jr experience hank jr like you've never before the man the myth the legend uh, so that'd be my pick of the week y'all go i watched this the other day thank you big country for sending me that but uh, hank jr full access my god it's so good it does it follows him around this is probably from the you know early 90s but is that the one with that, he's in the yellow square body chevy pulling into the gate yes. and the, yeah, yeah. In the beginning of it's him on a jet and they fly into a show and it's merle i mean ladies and gentlemen five time entertainer of the year yeah, mr hank out for sure. jr. You, you will not be uh there's no way you will not be entertained. I'll put it that way. Humanly impossible. If you're a fan of uh, country music, you won't love his both see his DV. So there, there's, there's my pick of the week for that. So, uh, what else we got on the agenda for today? Just, we've talked about, we've got some guests coming, uh, to some of the future episodes. We'll key y'all in on more of those as the weeks, uh, come and go uh looking forward to, to having some friends on here we thought this first week we had so much to catch up with that we we wouldn't uh we wouldn't try to squeeze a guest in and shorten anyone we just get all this out because justin and i hadn't really talked a whole lot since the break you know we've both been sick and then busy and had yeah, and, shows and we teased all these stories and we wanted to make certain that we got to all of these stories and 
hopefully you guys have been entertained. Uh, like we said, we'll have Laney on the 25th. Laney Wilson on the 25th is when that episode will come out, February 25th. Um, and then I know that we have some others lined up. I, yeah, I, I actually talked with our buddy and fellow podcaster and rock star, talking about rock bands, uh, our buddy Chris Shiflett, guitar player for the Foo Fighters. He's going to come on with us next month and uh, chop it up. We, in uh, March, yeah. Yep, you were on his podcast um, actually uh, a couple years ago. We were out in L.A., and we went over. That's when we first met uh, Shiflett, Brother Shifty, as I call him. And um, you did his podcast. That was one of the early things, podcasts you'd ever done as far as music space. And it really was. Kind of one of the things that pushed us to say, hey, that was fun. Yeah, it really was. That? He's a big fan of country music, and, and uh, a lot of his podcast is kind of geared toward country music guests. And Yep. Yep. Um, a guy who does it the right way, go check out his podcast. Uh, it's called Walking the Floor. Um, yep. We'll talk more about that as we get closer to having him and then obviously with him once we do have him. Uh, I know that I just saw an announcement or read or heard or something where uh, for at least uh, a period of time, the Foo Fighters are going to have their own channel on uh, Sirius XM. So nice for those out there who are fans of the Foo Fighters, uh, definitely check that out. I know they're doing a lot of press um, right now for that. So it'll be nice to uh, to have uh, have Chris on. He's a really really good guy, and and again really knowledgeable about country music. And it'll be kind of fun to have him on because, like you said, that was one of the earlier podcasts I did as a guest, and and now to have him on and you know we talked about rock bands earlier when we were growing up who was big and all that i mean is i don't know that over the past i don't know 20 years has there been a bigger rock band than the foo fighters i mean i yeah. don't maybe there has but i boy it'd be hard to it kind of went to come up yeah. with one it kind of went red hot chili peppers they were huge mm-hmm. and then kind of into pearl or uh Foo Fighters kind of took the role as the big yeah. touring rock band. I, I, I think the those other guys still, still gig. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun to have him. Yeah, and I know I know we we hadn't uh, we didn't do on music this week, but I know we got to get in our Mount Rushmore of something this week. So we we've kind of covered some music. We'll get back when we have some musical guests to do some Mount Rushmores of that. But I thought in. Um, uh, in conjunction with the Super Bowl, the NFL season ending with the with the end of the year this year with the NFL for at least a couple months, we maybe would do something involving football in a Mount Rushmore. Yeah, and uh, I didn't know. I thought maybe one would be the Mount Rushmore of not quarterbacks because we know Tom Brady's definitely on there, and there's a lot of great quarterbacks over the years that could have their claim to that. But I thought, what about just overall NFL franchises, like the the, the team, no matter if it moved or whatever, but that logo, that name, that team. That history, who would be our Mount Rushmore of NFL football? Well, I th- yeah, I like it. I, I do think, not because I'm a fan, but you got to start with the Steelers and the Patriots. They both have more uh, NFL Super Bowl championships than any other franchises. They're tied at six atop the list. Wow. So I mean, if if you got the most, I mean, you got to start there, right? Yeah, yep. So and then after that, where would we go next? Uh, Packers. Boy, I don't know. Uh, from a history standpoint, um, coaches standpoint, player standpoint, Packers Mark Star, would, Alabama. would have to be. Yeah, and you're talking Lombardi. I mean, um, which I thought that intro was really cool in the Super Bowl they did with Lombardi. Yeah. Um, a hologram or whatever. But, um, yeah, Steelers, Patriots, in my opinion, have to be two of the four spots. And then, yeah, the Packers. Uh, you can't, um, yeah, you got to have the Packers in there, I would just have to say. I would guess. I mean, you got the only team that ever went undefeated, the Bears, in the 80s. No, that um, was uh, the Dolphins in the 70s. Okay, okay, you're right, no. you're right. Don, Don Shula, 72 Shula. Bears, or 72 yeah. Dolphins. My fault, my fault. Yep. But um, the Bears would have an argument. I mean, the Cowboys, Cowboys would have to have won, an argument. What do they have? They have three? Yeah, and they're, as far as recognizable, I mean, the Dallas Cowboys, you say that name. Oh, yeah, you know. no doubt about it. Um, 
And then the Browns, but they moved and stuff that kind of messed them up. The Browns were historic back in the day. You know, they were. I huge think they're. For a long I, time. I think I would need to do a little more research. Um, you know, I'm probably a bit of a prisoner of the moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you look at it too, like it's shocking because. Correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't the Buccaneers an expansion team? Yes. In the yep. late 90s, maybe early 2000s? Yep. Their their first quarterback was one uh, Steve Spurrier. Wow. So, it would have been well before I yeah, said no, then. No, 70s. Yeah, 70s. They've got uh, two now. Um, yeah. They, you know, gi- the Giants, the Vikings back in the day. Uh, like I said, the Colts. They went to Baltimore to Indianapolis, but the Colts, Johnny Unitas. I mean, yeah. so I don't know. I guess we'll start this first one off. We're gonna have to. I, I, I'm gonna say, yeah, uh, the Steelers, the Packers, the Patriots, and the Cowboys. I guess would be my four as far as biggest football teams of all time. I would have to do some research beyond the Steelers and the Patriots, um, but the Packers. It's, it's got to be in the conversation for for sure. I don't know how many they actually have, but they've had five Super Bowl appearances and they've won four. Hey, by the way, so, talking about football, did you see the uh Hall of Fame class of the year in the NFL? No. Some studs. Uh Woodson, Peyton Manning, um and there was one other really big name um or to me i thought it was fitting um megatron i saw that i, uh, I saw i did see I I, the saw guy a i was thinking about it, it was fitting because i didn't see calvin johnson but I, uh uh lynch who played at tampa bay oh john lynch john lynch yeah cornerback yeah john lynch yeah he was a db Nine-time Pro Bowler. That's a damn big DB. Good Lord. Yeah, he would lay the wood, too. Woo. He still looks like he'd get you. But, anyway, I thought that – I mean – Yeah, fitting that he got it. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool, yeah. Because um, yeah. that was where he spent most of his career, but um, if not all of it. But, but yeah, I thought it was cool that Peyton Manning and Woodson, those are two huge names. Yes, Absolutely. So, and Megatron cut his cut his career a little short, but I mean he played in Detroit, had all those big games. They just couldn't get anything done. Yeah. So I mean, same with Barry Sanders. You know, something. Hopefully Detroit will turn the corner at some point. I always like watching them on uh, on Thanksgiving. But anyway, well, all right, we've been on here long enough. We probably ought to get out of here, Just. I know. Uh, I know you've got plenty to do, and I've got to jump on a, actually a conference call with our management and our production manager Jeff about some other upcoming shows we've got in March and April. So I'm excited to. Uh, talk a little shop with those boys so and i got uh, until basketball then, to coach. go ahead yeah well y'all got a game today we have two yeah ken oh, wow. plays and and then ella plays so yeah gotcha well wish him luck from uh paran and uh y'all remember everybody out there to use the hashtag justin more podcast when you're using social media uh to ask questions or leave comments for us and also remember to go to the merchandise page on justin's website and use the hashtag justin more podcast and your discount code section there for 10 percent off of everything you order from the store and that's just for you listeners here on the justin more podcast and uh, that'll run all the way until justin's birthday towards the end of uh, march and then uh, who knows after that maybe we'll come up with something else uh, uh fun for uh for you listeners out there just for you guys but uh until then thank you very much i'm jr the handler you can find me on all social media outlets under jr the handler at my website jrthehandler.com that's justin cole Moore. you can find him under the same name on all social media outlets and justinmoremusic.com is his website where you can find his merch our tour dates uh all kinds of cool stuff on their music and y'all be remember to go click like and subscribe and give us a quick rating uh on all the wherever you listen to your podcast or watch your podcast hopefully y'all have gotten it on youtube as well uh subscribe to the channels hit the notification buttons that way you're when a new episode drops you'll be the first one to know and we thank y'all and i'm gonna uh, get out of here uh, cody wanted me to remind everybody for our new listeners out there at the end of each of these episodes once we sign off i do a little reading every day and it comes from a, a book uh that i've found so useful over the last few years and it's by our, uh, our our brother we lost last year mr charlie daniels and it's called let's all make the day count uh, the everyday wisdom of charlie daniels and it's just a quick little two-minute little read uh that i'll do at the end of each of those very episodes. inspiring 
Yes, for sure. And I've, a lot of good response on that, people enjoying that. So y'all be sure to hang on and listen to that. And then uh, who knows, maybe next week we'll get Justin to play us a song between here and there. So um, y'all be listening out. We appreciate you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in and tuning out to the Justin Moore podcast. We'll see you guys right back here next week. Hey, thanks, guys. Also, don't forget to go to shopthislittlepiggy.com, shop TLP um on all social media um thank you guys season three is off the ground finally i think without a hitch and you got audio you got video at the same time simultaneously um looking forward to a great season great guests coming great new sponsors to tell you about from from yep. this point forward as well. So, And then, yes, we do have new sponsors to the podcast that we're putting all that together for next week's episode. We're oh so uh, to close the first to, to get finalizing to these, these yeah. deals. So, yeah. Uh, one of them yeah. I'm very it's, excited about because I can get some work done on, on the piece of equipment that I may or may not be uh, uh, using – from from said sponsor so yeah same I'm, and i'm getting thirsty if that gives y'all any hints so there you go <laughs> all right buddy i love you buddy i enjoyed it brother i'll see you soon cheers everybody hey thanks guys division and defeat if a house is divided against itself that house cannot stand mark 3 25 all too often the congress of the united states reaches a deadlock state when this happens absolutely nothing gets done They become so politically motivated and intractable that they would rather see the nation and its people suffer than to let credit for progress be given to the opposing political party. I have worked with bands who have separated into cliques and can't even get through a rehearsal without their biases showing. Marriages come apart for this reason. Longtime friendships fade and wither. Businesses flounder and nations grow weak and impotent. All this happens just because one faction refuses to acknowledge that the other faction could actually have some good ideas, and vice versa. When you distill this toxic brew, what you salvage is greed, arrogance, revenge, and conceit. All these are attributes of immaturity, blind ideology, and the unwillingness to sacrifice an iota of pride, even for the common good. Pride, arrogance, and conviction that your side is always right can lead down some long dark tunnels with no light and no progress at the end for either side. From time to time, we all need a good dose of humility and patience. We all need to be thrown off our high horse and land hard enough to learn the lesson to respect other people, their ideas, and their feelings. Let's all make the day count.